better plan today than we did last time. And I think it's from all of our combined input. So that's great. And we're definitely moving in the right direction uh, from my perspective. But let me open it up to the board. What uh, comments or questions do, uh, do you guys have? Uh, um, not really a comment, but more a comment on process. I, um, um, and this is speaking for myself at, at the moment. Um, typically, um, the order of um, doing things involves having an applicant go to the historic, uh, the historic commission first, get their input first. Um, things on this particular application are have gone um, a little bit backwards, and so personally, I feel like I, um, uh, all the the issues that um, he brought up about having the sort of deferring a, a you know the questionableness of whether we have authority in the first place, but it, that it's really um, uh, deferring those to the historic commission in that discussion. I'm I just I think that's completely appropriate, and that we probably shouldn't. Um, be talking about the landscaping, the fencing, the, um, the uh, appearance of the addition types of things and, and keep it to um, the things that you are. So I just sure. wanted to lay that out. That that's, I'm, I, I guess I'm saying I'm in complete agreement with you on, on that in terms of a process. Can I, can I just ask a question about that? Because you said landscaping is one of the things that you would defer. Okay. Your landscaping is actually on the list for, for oh, yeah. It's not clear that landscaping is the same as building things. You're right. Um. If, if, if we had to come, if, if we, if you approve the plan, including the landscaping that we have on the site plan, and we have, because we're willing to talk after approval, if, if neighbors come to us or I come to us on behalf of this group and said, look, can you add this landscaping or change this, and if it's doable without interfering with access and the like, if, if when we look at the zoning bylaw, we have to come back here for a minor modification on landscaping, I don't think anybody's going to uh, object. Uh, we, can't, uh, we can't negotiate every detail of landscaping tonight. You know, I'm, we have, uh, places up front being near the entrances is, is not necessarily the first choice but those are handicapped spaces for handicapped entrances and they need to be close four of them are well I understand you can move maybe two but I mean the others are not anything the others are not right yes you could probably move two spaces but I think it, I mean it's um, in general it's a very good plan the building, the new building is not a historic building. Uh, therefore, it cannot be uh, entirely controlled by the historic commission. You know, I understand that the, bur the barn and the, the existing house are historic structures. I think they've done a very good job of uh, preserving and transitioning uh, with the current plan. I, the uh, fire chief's concern is something that needs to be addressed. But otherwise, I think that what we have is a perfectly viable um, set of proposals. And of course, that's my own opinion. You 
you guys have any other questions at this time? Any comments? No, I was just concerned about the fire chief's movements around the site. Really. And then I thought there was there was a response, I think, from the attorney about when or when they would or would not plow snow. And I think everybody was saying the same thing, but it was sort of parsed one way or another. That's, that's how lawyers talk. Uh, but I think the intent, I think the intent there is that if the building is unoccupied for over two weeks and there's a large snowstorm, you may want to maintain some sort of access for fire personnel deep into the site. We just plow snow I think that was the intent of you know, plow it when it's not in you know, session. Well, okay, I, I can understand that because certainly it will be plowed then right after a snowstorm. Well, that's how I interpreted it, and then when I saw your response, I think we, we just crossed. I misunderstood. We got some uh, information on well, parking demand study. And there's something in small print that I think is important to point out that we believe the data to be accurate, of course, as it's based upon actual program, the actual program that will be moving from its current location in Stoneham to 186 Summer Ave. So this is this is you know based on on current use, yeah, based on experience. So I know we don't always want to plan for the worst case scenario as far as parking, but you know unless we have our crystal ball that's working, it becomes a little tricky. Um. I know this is putting you on the spot a little bit, but um, um, but uh, because we just we all just got that letter today. But um, for a, f I know you have a good amount of um, experience on this. So for a turnaround for a for a fire truck, um, uh, in this case, what are we talking about in terms of making that T part of the of the intersection, like like uh, 20 feet or 15 feet? I think the chief was looking for something like 20 feet, but in reality, I think when, when I look at the tempo of the turning movement, and I, I just received this at 2 o'clock yeah, today, I, so I didn't really. I know, I, 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 I got stuck I, today for three hours, I had a long day, so I didn't have a chance to look at it. But basically, it looks like this tee would have to be extended about an additional 10 feet. In the configuration of this, see how I have it at 90 degrees? Yeah. I could have it angled off so that when a, a fire truck comes in and turns this way, it could come in and turn this way and move out. I, I can play with that. It might be a 10-foot extension. Obviously, we want to go, go as small as possible because part of this idea was to try to save as many trees and, and, and deal with some of the concerns back there, and that's why we got rid of Yeah, them. yeah. I think the I last... Think, I would make sure the fire chief was satisfied, <coughs> but I try to go the minimum amount possible. Right. And, and if, if he was allowable to a turf stone, and as uh, Ken was saying, these spots here, I don't have a problem doing these spots as, a, as, a, as a, like a turf stone that grass grows up through. It's like an open face paver. The, the, the difficult part with that is striping the spots. And in front of this board before, I've used turf stone, but only in the case where if I needed 20 parking spaces and we thought there might be some special event <coughs> once a year that might we might need six or eight extra spaces, we've done turf stone as an overflow type situation. In this case, these spots would be utilized in the, in the, in the Thursday schedule. We talk about 38 spaces, but four are handicapped. So we're really talking about 34 conventional spaces. Um, so I'll leave that up to, to you guys to talk about. I, we don't have a problem changing that over to a turf stone. It, we feel we can manage it, but it is difficult to stripe it and keep them as uniform parking spaces. But it's also the reason I, I selected these spots is it's near the recreation area. I think that would work somewhat well. <coughs> but to, to get back to the original question, I'll, I'll try to limit the amount of extension, obviously, because that's a to everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Turf stone, the uh, CMU shaped section. I didn't hear it's what turf said. stone, the, the pavers with the sort of CMU section to yeah. it. Yes. So don't you just use a solid? I think we'll, in the past we've seen solids used where you want to do the striping, you don't have to paint it. What happens is once the grass catches on and grows up through it, you, you don't see the blocks at all. 
So no, it would be an eight inch section that's actually solid. I've, I've, I've done them yeah. for both fire trucks and parking, and the, the issue is that you just lose the stripes because it gets assumed by the grass if the grass really catches. Well, I mean, what, what Nick is describing is, is if you had the, um, the open, whatever you want to call them, pavers, paper. <laughs> with a line of solid pavers yeah. as in lieu of striping, yeah. basically stripe it with stone rather than stripe it with... It is, it is the method that we would use. Okay. I guess, um, you know, thinking about uh, the uh, one of the goals here that we're sort of batting around the use of, of alternative, you know, uh, pavers, maybe shifting some of the parking or, or, or minimizing some of the parking. Um, the, the primary view, um, especially if, if there are added um, fences along the, the side here, is um, really straight down the parking lot. I mean, straight straight down the the, um, the drive and where the parking spaces are. And so, with those, I, um, I, um, I think it's it's indisputable that those um, that those handicapped spaces need to stay um, uh, uh, where they are, as well as a number of spaces in front. Let, let's say those um, a, a number of spaces in 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 between the two sets of handicapped spaces. At that point, I'm not sure eliminating or shifting spaces really changes that view as you're looking down. You're still gonna see the building, you're still gonna see park um, uh, grass, some, um, some parking spaces, the 24-foot dri yeah. drive. So whether those parking spaces are broken up some or whether, it's whether, not, whether they're not broken up, I'm not sure that, that does a whole lot and I guess I like the idea of the of the um, the pavers down in the in the back there, but again, the I'm not sure there, I'm not sure um, what what they do um, in the end. You know. Um, well, it's, it would be nice to uh, you know extend the area for the turnaround, except that the, the specifically the turnaround for the fire equipment uh, has to be very sturdy. Uh, very heavy equipment. <laughs> I, I think um, in, in another uh, uh, on another application um, that was approved, wasn't there something that was done like that and approved by the fire department yes. where uh, um, artists. yeah artists, artists where um, mm -hmm. something else was used so it wasn't all pavement. So I, I um, yeah it, it worked. It can work. It can work. Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure about the the stone from the fire chief. That's not been looked at. You know, the, the stone by itself is generally not enough, not sturdy enough for the, the heavy equipment. That was the library too. We were looking at the library. Oh, yeah. You have to send the operators out on the ladder trucks and stuff. That's right. Yeah. You You guys good for now? Yep. I think we. Yep. I know town staff has some questions and comments, so why don't we um, give them an opportunity to speak? <coughs> so Gene or Jesse? Sure, and I see George in the back. Um, so this is mostly in our memo dated uh, January <coughs> 8th, where we talk about um, the revised site plan and the. We've mentioned lighting. Um, one comment was to consider reducing the height of the pole lighting to 12 feet to reduce the impact on the residential neighborhood. Um, in terms of the bollard lighting, the plan identifies a total of eight, and we're suggesting considering eliminating two of the bollards to help reduce the overall impact of the site lighting on the residential neighborhood. The, um, I believe the comment that we made, <coughs> the luminaire schedule, it calls for a light type C and we couldn't identify any lighting fixture that, ident that went along with that. 
So um, that should probably be eliminated on the plan if there isn't a light that goes along with it. <coughs> the um, applicant also indicates that all lighting except for the security line lighting will be turned off after dark. And it wasn't clear on the plans, at least to us anyway, what fixtures were considered security lighting. So it would be helpful to know that. Um, the, the other comment had to do with the wall pack to illuminate the playground area, but I think if I heard you correctly tonight, that's been changed, um, perhaps in response <coughs> to our comment, um, and so that it's going to a sconce now as opposed to a, um, uh, a wall pack light. Um, we also suggested about the illumination of the uh, monument sign, and I believe that's been revised as well. I don't, I don't know if you were describing a gooseneck type <coughs> light, but that's what we had suggested. And then um, the snow storage looks like that's been addressed. Um, we just want to make sure it's identified on the site plan, and I think, I think it is. Um, and then we had some questions about the zoning compliance, and I think you've answered that as well um, in terms of the maximum number of students that would be allowed and could be accommodated in the building. Uh, and then the last point was the drainage plan and the calculations, um, and we would defer to the town engineer on that. Okay. May I answer the lighting questions? Sure. The um, type C fixture is the same as A. It's on the lighting schedule. The type A is 12 inches tall, and the type C is 15 inches. Same fixture, different proportion. The floodlights have all been removed. The security lighting, I'm not sure where this where this word came from, but none of the exterior lighting is, uh, are we considering to be security lighting, and all the lighting on the outside of the building would turn off with the time clock, and that would be uh, after the close of business. The type A and C is this fixture. Um, we, it, it's this fixture in two sizes. One is 12 inches and one is 15 inches tall. This fixture has been eliminated. Um, the gooseneck, Fixtures would not don't work well with a wooden sign, which will be two-sided. So again, we're talking about using a, a very small uh, cylindrical fixture that's <coughs> three inches in diameter and three inches long and sits off the ground four inches and would be focused only on that sign. But they're spotlights. Is what you're saying? They're halogen lights, and they would they would have uh, enough control and be close enough that they will only illuminate the sign. There'll be no spread beyond the sign. The 12 feet from the top of the fixture to the base, we're fine with. We simply use a 10-foot pole rather than a 12-foot uh, a pole. Uh, so there's no problem with that. And again, as I've, I've had some back and forth, um, I'm sure we can find two bollards to remove. The issue we have is that we're trying to light the sidewalk, which is the accessible route from the building to the public sidewalk. And so um, the four that are in front of the building are required along there to have a minimum light level on the sidewalk. Uh, and then because we have parking behind, there's two more uh, of those fixtures behind. Uh, and I assume this one is at the end of the parking where we come around. Uh, the two pole lamps are here, and there's one there and one here at the parking. Uh, and I assume we could probably eliminate that. I have to look at that, that particular bollard. Um, is on the sidewalk from the <coughs> rear uh, basement stair to be, there's no use down there, so it's very unlikely that anyone would come out of that door. So I'm assuming that we could probably take that that bollard off without impacting our sideway. Is it a fire, fire. Is it, a fire uh, it is from the basement, but, it's, but there's no use space down there, so it would only be a mechanic going down there. Um, it would not be the way that you would ever egress the, the building per se. Um, I do want to correct one, it, it's not really correct, but we've been with the Reading Historic Commission four times. So to say that I mean, we have been there and we're doing, the, we know we've now moved to the West Street District with the establishment of the expansion of the historic district, but we have been meeting and have been looking at these design issues. So there's been a little bit of disconnect between what We've talked about in this room what the neighbors have asked for and what Historic has uh, <coughs> been in conversation with. 
They have not issued any approval, but we've been working with them through our various meetings with them. One more one uh, thing on lighting. Uh, the language we would request on lighting is that all packing lot lighting except security lighting shall be turned off after that. And this is the key language we request if no business is being conducted on the premises. This protects if there's a, a rare or late night meeting or an employee working late, they don't have to walk across a back parking lot and it maintains criterion's right to run as a business, but uh, it's not a usual circumstance by any means. The sign lights, uh, we, we're told that all exterior lights go off subject to the uh, after dark use that Mr. Marola was talking about. Does that include the sign lights? Yes. Gene. George, do you want any <coughs> Sure, I, mean, I can quickly summarize my uh, memo. Um, I, st I start off indicating all the uh, changes in the plan addressing previous comments with respect to the drainage, uh, the alteration of the parking, uh, and the snow storage, and the uh, alteration of the water sewer lines. Uh, I did save my major comments at the end. Uh, I did uh, request some minor additions to the uh, stormwater O&M plan, uh, adding uh, a few words here and there, a couple sentences, and one additional sentence, which are, which are minor. I did request uh, Jack to rerun, the, uh, do a quick analysis, a uh, rerun of one of the hy uh, hydraulic analysis to extend the uh, length of time that the model runs, uh, primarily because the A, a soils and the truncating the, uh, the curve, just to ensure that the volume of water that is being generated at the uh, site is calculated correctly. Um, this is actually more, more required for a two-year storm versus a hundred-year storm. So uh, I'm sure that the volume that's being calculated is probably the proper uh, volume, but it, it's a quick calculation that will ensure that the volume of the uh, infiltration chambers are correct. It's, it's something minor. Um, the major components that I had, is actually, as uh, Jack stipulated, one was to uh, extend the turnaround to provide access for emergency vehicles in the uh, trash disposal trucks. Uh, the second is dealing with the second infiltration bed, uh, as Jack correctly indicated. The, the two lines coming from the catch basin to the outlet control structure are about a foot and a half lower than the system itself. So what happens at every storm, the, the water has to surcharge to get into the system. Um, while the system can operate that way, it's going to, uh, in the long term, it's going to provide maintenance problems and sediment will uh, will develop into those pipes and, and potentially to pre uh, premature clogging of those drain lines. The simple solution to that is to dig a deeper test pit uh, if it was dug deep the first time. Jack may have determined that he was able to lower it enough and, and and have the design that way. The alternative, as Jack indicated, was to do an additional test pit in the rear um, and, and relocate the system there at a more suitable elevation. Uh, the soils are good soils. I don't expect the soils to change in the, uh, in the uh, rear parking lot. Um, so it's, it's really just a minor design change that's going to relocate an infiltration system at a lower grade or to a different location on the site. It's, it's nothing that is <coughs> un, un, unsurmountable. The balance of the, my comments are really just dealing with issues that uh, I reiterated the, uh, regarding permits that are going to be required for my, my department or, uh, prior to construction. So they're very Great, thank you. Jack, anything you wish to say? No, I'm in agreement with what George stated. Um, Everything he noted, I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, adjusting the plan to. Great, thank you. And I know we all know the fire department had a concern, which um, the applicant will, will be addressing for sure. And we'll uh, condition that as part of uh, anything that we, uh, we draft tonight. So the next topic that we were going to do was we were going to walk through the list of, of other concerns. However. I don't know if that's necessary. I don't know if that's necessary no given the presentation that you provided. There's still some stuff that's unresolved. There, are, there may be a few points that I didn't cover, so I love maybe just skim <coughs> down it. And of course, I re and I reserve two people's rights to talk about particular issues. Yeah, sure. Uh, that are on there. Uh, right. One is one. Um, 
So I'm not suggesting we need to discuss each point. I think I well, then why, why don't we do this? Maybe we handle this in a different way. Rather than go through this, why don't we open up for public comments and you can use that opportunity to address specific items that you feel are unresolved? Does that work? Okay. So let's do that. Who, uh, who in the public has a, a question or comment? One, sir? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. Dennis Carr, 61 Temple Street, on the Butter, uh, I submitted a letter back, two letters, on this project after, the first one after reviewing the first design. I submitted that on at the last meeting we had in December 8th. Uh, and then um, Criterion redesigned it. I had an opportunity to review those drawings. And I submitted a second letter on January 7th to the engineer into the planning department. I think uh, some of the issues uh, that I was concerned about have been addressed very nicely. I think the change to uh, away from the forest pavement is a real plus, not only for the town and for criteria, but I think it's just a good design change. I think my issues are um, drainage, 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 and a smaller issue is the snow. Um, unfortunately, I think the, uh, the the changes in design criteria uh, take a long time. Climate change is not taking a long time. I think if we look at New England, look at the weather forecast, what we've seen in the last couple of years, I think uh, uh, good planning would be to revise the criteria from about a 25-year design to a 100-year design. I think uh, Jack has designed the underground facilities that take the 100-year design. I think the limitations are on the, the inlet structures, where that is restricted by, um, by a potential of overflowing the curves, uh, particularly at the, um, at the so that end of the property, where there's a, there's a sag, and can we show sheet 14 by your chance? Sheet 4, the engineer design. There's a low point here, and I think when they look at the, I think I understand the design calcs, the, the, uh, the water level here is fractions of an inch uh, lower than the curb here for a 25 year design storm. I think just as, as a potential recommendation that would meet maybe a 100 year design would be just put double grades here. Now the water can get into the system and infiltrate into the um, infiltration beds and meet the 100 year design criteria. I just think that's good planning. My second point is the second critical point as far as an abutter and, and as far as drainage. That, by the way, this one would overflow. If you follow a contour line, it would affect this abutter. The second point that I saw was this point back here. Um, I think the, the engineer's comments addressed the sag that we saw in the pipe. Jack has revised by lowering the basin here with the option of doing additional test pack here and moving this infiltration basin back here. I think the same situation will happen if the soils are good, we'll meet the 100-year design here. I'm just concerned in, in that design that we maybe consider double catch basins back here. Uh, we've got the, a good design on the grate, a handicap, and uh, but even double catch basins, if one of them gets clogged with leaves, gives us the ability here to capture that water, get it into the system, and not overflow the, the, the curb and run into the abutters property. Uh, the second issue was, um, if we can go to, let me just go on this one. On the original design, we had slow storage, snow storage over here. Okay. Um, we were hoping to get an estimate of what depth of snow that was designed for. But if you look at the, the amount of pavement here compared to the area that was here, that's going to be a snow, tall snow storage. Okay. And for those who live in this area and maybe walk their dogs, we just would get a new fence back here in the school. Why? Because plowing the snow from the parking lot, they destroyed the fence, they had to put a new one there. We were concerned about just that volume of snow um, hitting, our, hitting the fences here. We asked on the, on the early, early letter to keep barrier here and it did that. Okay? I still don't have a sense of how high the, the snow pile is gonna be, but listening to Jack's suggestion of making um, the access to the fire department, when I thought it through, I thought swinging that 
disposal area this way would be good. Because the second issue that we were concerned about for the neighbors here who have gardens, we're raising the site, okay? We don't want any of the de-icing salt that is on the pile to sort of get captured here and go into these backyards to, to damage the gardens. So the more we can swing that this way in this re redesign that you're talking about would definitely be a plus for the abutters on this side. So I, my, my points are, I guess, uh, go for the 100-year design. It's good planning, considering what we're living through right now. Uh, the changes here, um, I think we're going to put the change, whatever they put in the design, whether it's something this way or this way. Um, I think those are my concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Jack, do you uh, yeah, I'll comment? Take, I'll take that quick, and then if George wants to comment on, on what I say, you just feel free. Um, typically, you only see double graded catch basins when you have really steep slopes, or if you have large volumes of water, uh, a large drainage area coming. Um, the, the grates are rated for a certain amount of flow, which 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 I meet in in this case is really no need for double graded catch basins here at all. It's not even close to warranting them. Um, the infiltration chambers, when I do my drainage calculations, I have to show that the chambers can handle up to the 100 year storm event. The, if, 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 if I don't put in enough chambers, it'll show that I'm exceeding the 100 year, it, it, would, it would surcharge the system. So in this design, the, these catch basins, even, even with the surcharge in the pipe that we, we kind of had to do in this case because of where our soil testing, this <coughs> catch basin would not surcharge even in the 100 year storm event. Um, and, and there's a six inch curb reveal there. So the design that I provide, the, the 100 year storm is fully contained typically within the infiltra infiltration chambers themselves. In no case, even, even with the surcharge pipe, would you ever see water back up onto the pavement. But as I stated, th this system will either be lowered or relocated to the back in um, the entire 100 year storm will be handled within those chambers. There'll, there'll never be an overflow um, unless you were in like a 500 year storm event, some extreme storm event. Um, and as Mr. Carr stated, with, 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 the, with the snow stockpile area, we tried to save a number of the trees surrounding that st soil stockpile area and it'll be over grass. So the idea, DEP looks for any uh, snow stockpile areas to be on a grass surface. They don't, they don't want it over pavement or areas that would run off. The, the grass provides ability um, for water to move back to the soil. We have A soils here, so it's, it's rapid infiltration rates. Um, and I, I believe in my operation maintenance report, I even addressed <coughs> the snow stockpile area. Or I'll add that to it, that it'll need to be checked and cleaned. If there's accumulated sand or anything like that, it, sh it should be removed and the grass should be uh, shown that it'll stay in a healthy condition. Um, so those are my comments as, as far as the inlet. I, it, we, we definitely, this, this site definitely functions fine with just a single inlet catch basis. George, anything you wish to add? Or? No, I, I guess the uh, you know, I, I'd have to relook at the hydraulic calculations, but I do remember um, looking at the rear system in a little bit more detail because of the surcharge line, and and I do recall that at the hundred feet <coughs> storm, the water level in the two catch basins uh, were actually about three inches below the grade. Uh, now, to properly model that through HydroCAD, you actually have to do it by a different method, but that gives you. A that gives you a reasonable approximation. What I don't recall is actually what the runoff rate going to those uh, basins are. Each basin with a curb inlet uh, is capable of taking about two and a half CFS maximum. Uh, so that's that's really what you look at to find out what the um, if you're going to have any excess gutter flow that can't be controlled and on and stop on the uh, top line. But I don't recall what those numbers are off the top of my head. There any, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Which which design are we uh, approving tonight? Is the, the one that was submitted uh, today with the revised alignment for the uh, fire, or the one that was submitted uh, for this meeting? Are you making uh, any type of uh, type well a de determination of that? Or is that just left for engineering uh, review with, with the engineers in the room? It will be a condition that we need to include in our decision that that is something that needs to be addressed and needs to be approved by. The fire department, engineering, planning—I would assume. 
um, but it wouldn't need to come back before this board. So I think your input is helpful, and I'm sure it'll be used uh, or considered when they do do that design. Thank you. What other comments do we have? Yes, ma'am. This is just to Jack's point. Um, I just have concerns. Jack, you just brought up the where the snow storage would be. Was that the same place where you said the fire truck turnaround would be? Correct. Is that going to be a problem if there's snow and the fire truck needs to? No, we 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 we, we make. We make sure that um, whatever area we show for the turnaround would have to be maintained as a plowed area so that in any weather conditions the fire truck could get in and out. So you need a different area for the snow storage then? It, it'll be the same area, but the area for the snow storage will get slightly reduced because of the extension of the turnaround that's needed. Ma'am, I'm sorry, what's your name and I'm address? sorry, Susan Cacoluto. Great, thank you. Comments? Yes, sir. Jerry Lamb, 194 Summer. Um, just, I mean, my thing has always been about the park, and um, <coughs> just have a couple comments. The original building that they had on the site was like a one-story site. It had 20 spaces in front. So when you made the comment about, well, it sounds like you already have history, so you must know how much you need. Well, they must have had history at that point, too, and they had Risen 20 spaces, so that's just a you know, comment. The other, the other thing is, um, we had a neighborhood meeting. This neighborhood meeting we talked about, and and a, a comment was made at that that um, maybe we could adjust the hours. So again, it, it, it gets back to the, the max spaces. So it, if they were willing to adjust the hours, I don't understand why we have to plan the 38 spaces the max one day a week. It just seems like. You know, that that could be played with. The other thing at that meeting, this is one thing I, I keep harping on, is, is someone said the reason they moved the parking away from the house was the historical commission. And then we brought that up at the last CPD meeting. They said, oh, no, no, I must have misspoke or I misheard. It was DRT. Okay, DRT made us do that. Okay. It and it's, excuse me. Excuse me. It wasn't. So, you know, and I went back to the DRT, and Art mentioned this meeting, to minutes, and there's a pile of stuff in here about things they were asked to do, and it's all in bold. Right? The DRT you know, tells them, yeah, why don't you change that, change this? And it, there's not one comment in there about moving the parking away from the building. So, you know, m my point is, I, I don't know why it's digging their heels on this. There's like 15 feet between the building and the parking. We could shift that over 15 feet. It's 15 feet away from the plot line, so I, I don't know why that would be a big change. So, and I know I know uh, Mr. Marvolin said no, we don't want to do that. But other than saying they don't want to do that, I don't see why not. You know, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't seem like it's any skin off, other than changing the drawing because nothing's been paved yet. So, um, so that's my comments. You know, part, I, I, you know, I, I don't understand. And if someone could explain it to me more about the why we have to plan to the max when they mentioned that we're willing to adjust as well as moving those spikes, the, the whole parking lot. On the on the alignment of the driveway, it, I thought we had talked about that during the last meeting, and maybe my memory is a little bit foggy, but um, which <laughs> certainly could be. Um, but I thought that it had to do with. Um, with the desire to keep the driveway um, uh, straight yes, and uh, uh, minimize the turns for um, for fire um, for fire and the grades that are needed between the the um, to be maintained between the the barn and the the sidewalk and the parking lot and make all that work especially in that back area where you'd have to be um, sort of weaving around the barn. Is that, that, that that's, that's my that's recollection. Correct. The, the barn is <coughs> at a slightly higher elevation. It, it, it sits up. And as I spoke about, this entrance right here to the addition, right now it's just a, a ramp coming in straight. If this gets shifted over, in, in this grade, the, the, the elevation of the addition, addition has to match the first floor elevation of the existing house. I would, I would need to design another switchback ramp like we did here, back here. Um, so we tried to basically keep it straight because that, that was something the fire chief if we had to pull in 
in the worst case, if he wasn't able, he could back out like he does in other spots. We are going to provide the turnaround. The building is going to be sprinkling. But it was to keep it straight. And we did try to beef up the landscape <coughs> on the side. Which I appreciate. Yeah. So I appreciate there, there are some trade-offs that, that we But try, as far as it being do. straight, it could be straight. You see the large bump out next to the barn. You could move that straight over to the left, it, and it, it, would be, it would still be straight. Can you just uh, com, uh, pan that up a little bit, Gene, so I can see the street? Oh. At, at the site entrance, that's OK. At the site entrance, there's two town trees, here and here. So we're trying to keep this. We're coming in right between the two trees. You, you can't take down a healthy tree in Reading with, without a permit from the tree warning. And it has to be dead or dying. They don't just let, let you take one out. So we actually we, we located the existing trees. That's where we plan the curb cut. That's where we have to come in. So that, that's about when we put a slight curve to pull it away. But from you the did property. that slight curve the opposite way, Jack. You, you, could, you could do the same thing on the flip side. Oh, you're, 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 you're barren to the right, barren to the left. I'm going to ask that, that we maintain some uh, rules of order, and I think right. questions and comments should go through the chair, Mr. Hanson. Okay. Thank you. I, I guess that's the one thing I should know is we, we try to keep it straight. The reason for where the curb cut is, this alignment, which we're going to retain the two town trees. Here's our curb cut. We're coming in straight. Um, and, and, and we tried, it's actually balanced, the landscaping here and the landscaping to the building. It, it's somewhat balanced if you look at it. And like I said, we did try to beef up the landscaping on, on the abutter side <coughs> while retaining all the existing large trees in place. Let's give somebody else an opportunity to ask questions because I know there's a number of people here that wish to. So, yes. Hi, Ian Gordon. Um, I just want to clarify a few things because um, nobody actually stated it. So, are there 38 spaces on the new revised plan? Yes. Okay. Um, do it, there are four handicapped spaces? Do you know off the top of your head? Yes. Okay. yes. Is that what is required? I'm sure it is. Two are required, but for the operation of the building, given the population that we use, we believe that four is the prudent number. We also have some small van delivery of uh, children who need transportation. Okay. Um, the other thing I just wanted to share as well in that um, neighborhood meeting that there was a comment made that they maxed out the number of spaces to 38 spaces because they knew this was a um, uh, contentious plan and that they max it out so that we could work together on possibly not having so many spaces um, and now it seems that um, we're back up to the 38 um, I also wanted to point out the importance of no parking coming forward of the house one of our main objectives was to maintain the integrity of this neighborhood and um, I think two spaces come forward of the house so when people are walking or riding their bikes or the greater community are using this neighborhood, which they do, um, to kind of just not be hit with parking as you're walking down the street. Um, it's also not clear to me why you couldn't move the driveway over to the left, still not really clear to me, back towards the house. Um, if you're going to possibly move some of those front spaces to the back, or maybe do a third line in the back. If there is less parking, why can't you move it back? Maybe swerve it a little bit, <coughs> still with the ability to back out a fire truck, or just to maybe reconsider that. Um, I also think the view from Summer Ave and for all of the Summer Ave abutters um, is the worst view. It's going to look like a tarmac and that if you can break up the spaces with some other material so that um, it just doesn't look like asphalt everywhere. So um, <coughs> I don't think that's really been addressed significantly. I think we dealt a lot on both sides, which is great, but really the view from the front for the general public and from all the abutters on Summer Ave has not really been taken into consideration. Um, I also don't understand exactly where the monument sign is going to be placed. I can see it, but it, it seems still pretty far out from the original home. Could somebody point that out to me? So 
Can you explain back, right? to me where that is? So where is it going to be? About 20 feet back. Pardon me? About 20 feet back from the side. I'm not good with footage. Can you point to so where it's going to be? The, uh, I pointed to it. It's right so it's right so there that's now. where the revised yeah. sign is on the revised plan is going to be? So it still comes out very, very close to the sidewalk. Um, no, it's not very close. It's like from this side of the room to the other side of the room. How far is it from the house? I'm requesting that it, that it could be pulled back farther so that when you can still see it when you're driving or need to pull in there, but that it's <coughs> not when you're walking or you're riding your bike or whatever, that it's going to be so visible from the sidewalk and the street. That was our original. <coughs> it's got to be pulled back farther. It's better than 30 feet behind where, the sidewalk. So is this where it is? Yeah. We had requested that it go here. Mm -hmm. So that was just a cons another thought that was important to me, to us. Um, I think that is it. Oh, I know, the construction hours. Um, the Reading Town bylaw allows for construction on Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and on Saturdays from 7 to 5. And this is um, a major commercial project in the middle of a residential uh, neighborhood with families and children and we request that no construction occur on Saturdays and that the Monday through Friday 7 to 8 be possibly changed <coughs> to 7 to 5. We all work really hard. We have long weeks. We don't want to be dealing with construction at, at, into 8 o'clock in the evening. I have young children. There's teenagers next door. It's on 8 o'clock in the evening and also on Saturdays. I think that's a good neighbor policy to consider that. And the other, this is just kind of a housekeeping thing. We just wanted to get on the record for trash pickup. Um, if it's a private company that is doing that, that it's done within business hours so that we can keep some kind of quiet to our neighborhood. I think that's it. Thank you. Any comments to those? Or don't mean to put you on the spot, but. No, really, I, th I think we will, the construction hours comply with the bylaw and the, there's a problem, I guess we can try to talk to people, but the bylaw is, the bylaw contemplates construction in all areas of the, of the town. Okay. What other questions are there? Yes, please. Um, Senator Romer, 176 Summer Ave. I'm the direct northern abutter of the property. Um, Mr. Maxwell has said on many occasion that he is willing to work with the neighbors on fencing and landscaping, and he even said tonight, landscaping is easy. Yet, we still do not have any guarantee whatsoever that we're going to have a fence and a green screen between us and this new, pro new building. And so I want to know what type of guarantee I have, because if it's not incorporated into plans, if it's not um, spoken into the record tonight, I have no guarantee that I'm going to get a fence or a green screen, and I feel that it's un unacceptable. I we <coughs> it seems like you Gene, if, may address if you it. would yep. come back to the, the either landscape plan or the uh, first site plan. Um. No, no, uh, to the first plan. Yeah, I think So, uh, Dr. Littleton has agreed that we we'll, we can do the wood fence that you've asked for. Yep. From that stair to this corner, we'll turn that corner, okay. and then we will. If this landscaping is not, it's not tall enough. Okay. Then we Please. can install arborvitae along there to the back of the historic house, and we're willing to have that a condition. The arborvitae. Yes, that's okay. fine. We'll condition that in the decision. Uh, Bob, uh, Dr. Littleton just said, subject to agreement by the Historic District Commission if they have jurisdiction. I haven't studied that intensively. Okay, yep, that makes sense. Yep. What other questions or comments are there from the public? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Bob Salter, 247 Summer Avenue. Um, my first question is to the board. 
I don't really understand, and it's because I just don't know CDC rules. What is the reason why a decision has to be made today when there's so many design changes still being discussed? What's the reason? State law. State law and the town charter. What does the state law say? Says that they are uh, entitled to a decision by the board within a period of a certain number of days subject to voluntary extensions. And they have uh, voluntarily gone past the first statutory uh, deadline to tonight. <coughs> but by state law and by town charter, the, they can presume approval of the submitted plan uh, by the end of the evening, whether or not we vote and decide. Okay. Um, can you sit down? Because I'm speaking. And I'm, I'm, I didn't, I didn't I'm just a citizen of town. Okay. All right. Um, so, if I understand correctly, <coughs> if they agreed to the design changes that we're talking about so that it was transparent and people could see it, they could agree to another extension so that we could all see the revised plans. Is that correct? And it could go on to another day with the revised plans? If they agreed to it? I mean, in, in theory, I hear some things going, but I'm, you know, as a citizen sitting here, I'm confused about all the design changes that we're talking about. I'm not seeing plans. Plans have been submitted today, and comments are still coming in today, and we're not seeing the plan that's getting approved. It doesn't make sense from a committee standpoint. So I have this observation sitting here that the committee is getting bullied okay, into making a decision. And it's much the same impression that I have as a citizen in town that many of the committees have been getting bullied into making decisions when they don't really feel comfortable yet in making that decision. So I think that we're all willing to stay here until late in the evening to make sure all the points are addressed. And so that's, those are my, that's one comment. Um, the other comment that I want to make is I think that the neighborhood has given some very good argument for reducing the number of spaces. But yet, we're kind of hitting an impasse that without a real good explanation for why, for why they won't reduce the number of spaces. And I'm not seeing much support from the committee for the neighborhood. And is there a reason why? I mean, why do they need 38 spaces instead of 34? Why can't they take a few more spaces out in front the way the neighborhood's requested? What is the committee, why, why wouldn't the committee consider that as a um, condition? Well, a few things. One, I'm, I'm not feeling worried. So I'm feeling relatively comfortable with the information that's being presented before us. This is how a lot of these decisions are handled. We look at materials, we make changes, we come to agreement on them, we condition them as part of the decision, and then we rely on the very capable skills of our town engineer, town planner, to represent us and agree or disagree with the changes that have been conditioned in, in the decision. Um, parking is always gonna be a challenge. We we can study it left, right, and center, and we could get it right on the nail, or we could fail miserably. There's only very, there's very limited, there's a lot of experience out there, but every site is just a little different. They gave us materials, it seems to be very valid. It's based on experience. 38 is the maximum number of spaces. If we say 34, and then there's four s cars out in Summer Ave, we're gonna be getting phone calls about that as well. I mean, there's two sides to that argument. Can't you always add more parking if it's not enough at a later date? Not, I don't think it's that simple. And that's the challenge with a lot of these air, projects is that, the excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. A lot of the challenges with these projects is that, you know, a change here, a change there. I mean, there's a lot of implications that could occur as we try to make these sorts of changes. I don't think adding parking at a later date, I don't even, I mean, I guess it's possible but, I mean, there's probably a lot of rework and a lot of challenges that are associated with that as well. 
I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I, I guess there, in looking at, at this site plan and the discussion and everything, I, I think there are uh, two spaces um, that um, that may have a, a an impact on um, um, on the visual sense from the street, um, and you know, it, it, it's only two spaces. It would fit, I think, you know, to the looking at your your traffic, uh, your your parking data. Maybe 36 does work for you. Um, you know, 30. You, you know, um, getting I can see getting much lower than that probably wouldn't. And those are the first two spaces up a, um, towards the street from the handicap um, uh, spaces. Um, other than that, we can talk about reduction in um, in spaces, but I'm not sure w to what point it serves. Um, and I, I I get I guess I would I would ask whether um, whether you you think you could live with the um, reduction of those uh, two spaces in the front um, uh, provides a little bit more green space up there um, in the front, but um, uh, but doesn't really impact the overall. Mm -hmm. Other than that, um, w w um, I I'm not sure w from the total site picture and an impact on the neighborhood I'm not sure what further reductions um, w would serve that's my take mm -hmm. I mean if the two up front were turf stone or whatever the that would be less of a visual uh, impact yeah the, the I mean you still have so hold on let, yeah please can you address John's Yes, I, I, Mr. Turtle, I, I didn't hear you. I apologize. I was being talked to. Could you just repeat your last comment? Oh, I was just thinking that um, if the two non handicapped spaces, the closest to the existing sidewalk, were to be uh, created with the turf stone, then the eventual, uh, the visual appearance would be, you know, perhaps less. Uh, you know, field of pavement. If the car is what the impact is, not the pavement so much, it's the yeah. car. Right. Well, It'll be a top. <coughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the. the yeah. um, that turf stone stuff doesn't work, by the way. I don't know what your experience is, but once you plow it two or three times, it never grows back, and then you have to keep seeding it, and then it's a big, muddy mess. So. They can leave. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah, a great still, We're still going to have the concrete walkway heading out to summer yeah. anyway, because we want to make that right. positive connection for foot traffic. So well, it's, it's, I mean, if I'm feeling bullied by anybody, it's being bullied by the neighborhood, um, honestly. Wow, wow. <laughs> oh, we live there. Wow. 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 I live there, too. Excuse me. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's pull it back together. George, I saw you had your hand up. Did you want to make a I comment? I just wanted to make a quick comment about um, making the two spaces up front turf stones. You'd still be lining the parking lot with granite curbing and everything, so yeah. you, you really wouldn't lose that visual effect of the parking lot being there because you'd change those two to turf stones. No matter how much the grass would be, you'd have to keep it cut down. It would be sort of, you know, be indented by the granite curbing around the remaining area just as it is now. Should be. The only comment I want to make, I understand well, no matter what we do or say, there's going to be some disagreement and some intents, and that's people's right. I want to keep in mind the, the purpose of this program. There are going to be kids with handicaps. I'm not happy on that, at, to be, other than the fact that it's true. There's going to be strollers coming out of vans. The, the, the spaces that we have close to the building serve a purpose. They're not there willy-nilly. So we would not volunteer to remove them. And, and I actually agree with Mr. Safina after talking to, to Jack about the turf stone. It's, it's not a magic bullet. Well, just let me respond to that. I'm sure, I don't want the turf stone there, but I do think those two spots could go away. Um, there's another concern about parking, though. Jack, what's going to happen when you try to get this turnaround in the back end there? Are you going to lose spots back there now? <coughs> no, I won't lose any parking spots, but I will have to extend that T portion into, into where the snow stockpile is. So we'll move the stockpile east? Uh, east. Yeah, I still have some room with the stockpile. You can see uh, I, the end of the stockpile's here, yeah. and there's some trees here. So I have room to expand it slightly. I do, I do think I'll have to extend the, the turnaround 8 to 10 feet to, to make the, the 
I'm just trying to think of, I'm, looking, I'm trying to picture the area like the lambs are on that side. What's to the east of that property? I mean, is there a to the bottom? No, no. I know what's on the bottom. I'm thinking what's on the school. Well, I'd rather move it towards the school than towards the residence. You know I mean, like, I'd rather, I'd rather get the snow going east than south. And, and in that case, is one <coughs> tree here. If I took that one tree out, I could expand that snow pile area into this area without affecting any of the other mature trees. We were, we were just trying to save as many mature trees as we could. Yeah, no, I understand. I'm just trying to keep the pile away from the properties as much as possible. I think you're going to need more than... I still don't see how you're going to make that in an angle and not this part. Because I, I, I'd still keep this spot here, Nick, but then I, I'd come off at an angle back this way, maybe. I, I, have, I have to look at it. Like I said, I just put it this afternoon, so I haven't had any time to look at it. I see a question in the back, yes? Yep. Um, Matthew Danfield, 192 Street. Um, could I just offer on the side of getting rid of those two spaces near the time, that them being near that corner of the building for um, clients is not that useful if the clients aren't using the front of the building. The classrooms are in the back of the building. <coughs> My understanding is that students <coughs> and clients aren't going in the front offices of the building. So to say that those need to be there for strollers and access is, I think, probably um, not true. Yeah, I, th I there seems to be a, it, it may even be a, called a compromise that if we could eliminate those two spaces it may address a lot of the concerns around the number of parking spaces the the, the sight lines um, I mean per perhaps a practical reason maybe to get rid of them so that's I, I think that that may be a uh, something to, to definitely consider I realize there was a, a rejection of that proposal but I think let, maybe let, let's reconsider that because that could be a good compromise here Yes. Uh, Mr. Hans, can we go outside? Uh, can, can sure. Do to discuss this issue. You and me? No, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> my that, would, that would be bullying. <laughs> <laughs> that would be illegal. <laughs> yes, please go Thanks. ahead. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay, no yeah, problem. Thanks. Yep. Let's so, five. Let's uh, try to keep it at five minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Five minutes. Let's take a five minute break. Yeah. Why don't we?
So we'll give, uh, yeah, please have an opportunity. There you go. strongly about the number of spaces. However, when we talk and we can make an accommodation on those two front spaces, which we, which we think should be acceptable. Uh, and I want to turn it over to Jack Sullivan because he's better with the plan than I am. Sure. And we'll, we'll point out the accommodation. With, with yeah, thank you. Go ahead, Jack. So just so we're on the same page, these two front spaces, one, two, would be relocated. And when we talk, we'd look to relocate one space over here one space back here. Mm -hmm. This would cause us to shift the dumpster pad more towards this lot line. We'd still offer the same level of landscaping protection. Um, Dr. Littleton, we feel the 38 parking spaces is a must. Um, but we're willing to take these two spaces out, relocate them to the back. We did talk more about the turf stone. I, I really, I think that's trying to put lipstick on this and, 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 and with I, I thought with this recreation area it might make sense to do the turf stone. The more I think about it, I, th I think it's a maintenance problem. Half of the reason we do the porous pavement is because we were afraid with any freeze and it, there's no treatment. We wanted to provide treatment for this. If CPDC feels strongly that the turf stone is required, <coughs> we obviously entertain it, but we'd rather stay away from that. But th th those are the two, two things we throw out to, to move this forward. Eliminate, relocate these two spaces to the back and, and eliminate the turf stone unless you feel strongly about it. Uh, yeah, I just want to make it clear. So that would mean extending the landscaping in place of those two parking spaces? Correct. Okay. That would become green space. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, Mary Ellen O'Neill, uh, Summer Avenue. I'd like to ask the um, They've mentioned the use of two vans, and we have not asked how many students, not students, they, they refer to them as clients, they bring in on the vans, which absolutely reduces the number of parking spaces that they need. That has not been fully explored. I mean, they have putting van spaces, they have vans. Do they bring two, four? I don't know how many children I can ask that question. Is it in the... It is in the faculty yeah. study, and, and, and we don't think it's, it's fruitful to try to predict the next 20 years, you know, whether there's going to be six kids in a van or four or eight, but it is in the, in the study. Yes, I see they have a lot of flexibility in their schedule. As you see, that they have no groups uh, scheduled either Monday, uh, Wednesday, or Friday afternoons. There's a lot of a play in that, even if they, which I, my, my assumption is that they intend to grow their business here. And um, so this still allows them a lots of flexibility to add, add and stagger times, um, and still make do with you know 30 to 35 spaces. And they do have vans, and they do transport probably more than one child at a time, which you know just eliminates the need for a parking space for for a student in the client in the van. Thank you. Yep. Before. Sir, are there any other questions or comments from some of you who hasn't spoken? Okay, please. Yeah. Yes, Bob Salter. I had a few points, I didn't make them all. I'm not going to go back to the same ones. Um, another point that I thought was nicely made was that um, if you remove some of the parking in front, you can add it to the back and it maybe expand the back parking more to make less of an impact without impacting the number of parking spots. And that seems to be a consensus that they uh, just were willing to accept. Um, I think maybe even more so in considering three rows of parking back there and reducing, again, some of the impact in the front would be a good compromise. Um, so I leave that for you, but I do have another point too. And it goes to the information that we're all being given. And, and frankly, there's a little bit of doubt. I mean, it, whenever we're being given any information, it's, well, here's the information. It's very nice that we're giving you this information. It, but we're not required to give you this information. And, and with this information that we're giving you, such as the schedule, you can't do anything about it. You can't restrict us in any way. So that's how the information is always being presented. 
And the information that we're being given said, all right, here's a Monday, Friday schedule with a maximum of 38 spots. And when we say, oh, you could juggle your schedule and reduce to fewer spots, they say, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. <coughs> okay. And um, I, I happen to know some people who work for Criterion, not at the Stoneham site, but at the Woburn site. And they say regularly they run Saturday hours. Now, there have been no Saturday hours presented here. Um, so the question really is, are we being presented the real information? They say they don't have to give us any information at all. But is, are we only being given 90% of the information, then there's 10% of the information that's still being withheld? Perhaps, you know, I, I guess, in response to criterion to address it, that it, it, No, I guess, it, it, um, we go through a lot of site plan reviews every year. Um, and parking, whether it's adjacent to a residential um, district, which we deal with a lot, or it's smack dab in the middle of a commercial district, which we almost never deal with, um, the parking, the way that the Reading parking requirements are set up, it's always a question of what's needed. What we try and do as this board, um, we, could, we could apply some fairly rigid in, and strict um, um, formula, um, like many other towns do, that say you have to provide X number of spaces per square foot or per, per this or per that. Um, uh, but what we've understood um, is that that doesn't really work all the time because that typically produces more parking than, um, than is needed. It's, it's designed to provide more parking than is needed. So, um, you know, I guess, I, um, uh, so we work with a lot of business owners that come in front of us and present some information. And you know what? Sometimes it's not all right because sometimes they, they don't know. Um, sometimes they're making their best guesses. Sometimes I'm sure they're giving it to us and they fully know that it's, it's not right on. Um, but we have to look at it and see whether, whether it's reasonable and, and whether it, it, it um, uh, passes the, uh, the smell test because we have um, no way of um, sort of getting into ta um, um, businesses towns, businesses, business policies, and exactly what they're going to do and exactly when they're going to do it. That's not what we do. We don't, I, I, this, we, we, we're doing a site plan review and we're making sure that, the, that the, the, the business and the site and the externalities of doing business in town all sort of work. So we're, we're not in the business of getting in and micromanaging um, uh, how businesses operate. Um, or whether, um, you know, cross-examining of whether the information that they give us is right on when we, when we don't have the ability to do that. So, um, so it's, I guess, in summary, it's not uncommon that the um, parking information that we get from businesses, um, uh, you know, leaves you uh, questioning. Um, but from some degree, you've got you've to look at it yourself and see whether it makes sense or not. It's an art. It's not a science. If yeah. we made it a science, then um, then then the requirement would probably be that they have to have 55 spaces or something like that on the site. Uh, that's the that's yeah. probably the, the, the case. And, and by the same token, we've heard loud and clear from the neighborhood and, and the abutters that on-street parking on Summer Ave is would be considered a catastrophe. You know, so the the fact that they're they have a very reasonable number of spaces, and, and if we can, you know, move a couple to the back, all the better. But squeezing it to the point where they regularly have on street parking would be, uh, you know, the worst outcome. Anybody who has not spoken, I see three hands from people who have spoken, so I want to offer the opportunity to others. Okay, ma'am, yep, go ahead. Uh, Kathy Greenfield. Um, just for perspective, just to, I uh, just want to interject that the amount of parking on that site 
is the same amount of parking that serves all of the businesses from the depot to Bangkok Spice on Haven Street. There are 38 parking spaces on Haven Street from the depot all the way up to Gould Street. That's how many parking spaces it is. There's plenty of parking. That's the objective. <coughs> and you did a great job. So two other hands up. Sir? I just want to second Bob brought the point we compromised to move two spaces to the back that they why not have the third row back there and then move more spaces. How many spaces were in the T? Right. The original plan for T layout. Thirty nine. Thirty nine. That was still the same number. So where did they where weren't they? I think it was one row of parking, I think, in the T. I thought the, I watched the meeting by the way, even though I didn't attend. Yeah, it was just one, it was one row. Oh, it was just one row? Yeah. The intention of the parking in the front by the school is that these are parents with That's children with strollers. And the further back we put them on the site, the more people who are parking in the back and then coming down the sidewalk, around the barns, up the little incline, and then to the ramp of the building. So the idea is that it's easy for parents to park and bring their children into the building in strollers. And did you have a question or a comment? Um, yeah, I did. With the um, those additional two spaces moving up and the trash moving up closer to our lot line, I would request that that um, existing chain link fence be changed over to stockade fence. Okay. The portion of the site, the condition, the board can make the condition it likes, but that's actually the school parking lot. Part, no, part of that chain link fence it abuts my lot line. A very good portion of it does. Sure. Any, any part that abuts your lot line will go ahead and do that. If you want to bring up the, um, there's another file in there that has the assessor's map. That's in, it's a separate file. Uh, oh, I don't, I'm not sure that you have it. Well, the jog in the in the northern property line is is the uh, corner. No, it's not. I don't think so. It's not the line. I don't know. Who's looking for the town map? It is. My lot goes all the way back to the the chain link fence in the back that abuts Parker, and then if you walk over towards 186, there's a piece of chain link fence that bisects. And I assume that fence is owned by the town if it is also covering part of the school. I, because there's a piece of chain link that comes out from Parker Fence towards Summer Ave. So I don't know if that, I don't okay. think that would be owned by the town. Okay. I don't know. We think that's school fencing. I, I don't swear by it. Yeah, it could yeah. be because all the fencing back there is school fencing. I think the way I think the way it was phrased was we don't have to identify it necessarily right here right now but your lot line whatever abuts my lot will yeah. have <laughs> will stockade have fence stockade fence from Parker fence forward yes okay and the, and the dumpster will be screened with a stockade fence as well okay and landscaping behind it yep. as well. good ma'am um, I just want to reiterate again and please ask to consider about the Saturday construction hours. Reading's construction um, bylaw is more liberal than the town of Boston, which does not allow construction on Saturdays. And that this is going to be very, very impactful on this neighborhood. And as a good neighbor policy, quote unquote, from Criterion's literature, that would be a really good neighbor policy to not do construction please. into the Exterior. evening hours and not on Saturday. Exterior. You're really disrupting a lot of lives. So we're all willing to work together. But I think that is a reasonable request. Well, I don't think we really. I, I, I guess that's I, I would. I, I, um, I understand construction impacts a lot of people. At almost every construction con, um, project in town is abutting a residential property. The the only one that 
probably didn't was when um, Jordan's was built. So um, I, I guess, yes, you're right. It probably is, um, it, it probably is impactful. Um, but I guess I would suggest that I'm not sure why um, I guess I would suggest that that's something that we bring up at town meeting if we want to start restricting construction on Saturdays to, to um, um, then we should do it town wide. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. I, and that's as a request. Yeah. <laughs> if they want, if they want to do that, then that's fine. But I, I guess I'm not. I'm, right. I, I wouldn't put that in as a condition. It's in their best interest to build it as fast as they can because every day costs them much more money. Uh, I would think that shorter overall construction period would be better for the neighborhood. I know the Saturdays suck. And, and look, there's construction in my neighborhood and someone could be building a house right next to you and they'll be working seven to eight on a Saturday. And that nail gun is just as annoying. I, I always just think it's faster, get it faster, get them out of there. Are there any other comments or questions? Oh yes, I'm sorry. You did want to make a comment, sir. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, sorry, just a <coughs> um, I want to address the point of the requirement that you act tonight. Um, so this is going to respond to Mr. Tuttle's response to Mr. Salter. Um, and I'm not intending to bully anyone here. I'm intending to educate or at least prompt, prompt a uh, fuller discussion. Um, state law, to my knowledge, and certainly the statute, Chapter 48, doesn't um, impose constructive approval, uh, doesn't provide for constructive approval for site plan review. Um, the, as far as I know, there's no case law. Mr. Margolin can correct me on, the, on that, or perhaps town council has advised you <coughs> otherwise. Uh, case law doesn't either. Um, what Mr. Tuttle referred to as the town charter, uh, I haven't seen the charter, uh, but I'm referring, but I look at the zoning bylaw. I don't know if that's what he was, if that's what he meant, or if he meant a separate document. The bylaw says as follows in 4.3.3.2. Um, you shall act within 60 days of your determination of completeness. And that was 60 days plus a few more to get to tonight's meeting after the new year. So the, you're at that limit and it says you shall do it within 60 days. But it does not then say that if you fail to do it, it's constructively approved. It's, it's an obligation, uh, but like many, many, many obligations in the law, the requirement is stated, you're expected to try and follow it in good faith but it doesn't mean that, uh, it doesn't say what the consequences are if you don't. People are expected to follow the law. And there's no question by anybody here that you're trying to decide expeditiously and trying to decide this in good faith. Um, the, ne the other sentence, and I think this is the, the, the key sentence, no building permit shall be issued by the building inspector without your written approval or unless 60 days lapse from the determination of completeness. That says the building inspector can't jump the gun. He's got to give you the full 60 days act. It doesn't say that on day 61, if you have found the plans incomplete or you're waiting for revisions or the town engineer has just, or the fire chief has just made a comment that everybody needs to respond to and they've described the response but you need to see it. It does not say that on day 61, the building commissioner, <coughs> inspector can issue a building permit. <coughs> and I think you, he or she would be crazy to do so if you've got it under advisement. If, if, you're, if you continue this for a valid reason, and you continue it for a short period. There's no suggestion that you're just trying to stall or delay. I don't believe there'd be any constructive approval. You get a final plan in front of you that, that shows the things we're talking about. Moving the two parking spaces, how the landscaping back there will be adjusted. It will show the fence, it'll show the, the landscaping, it'll show whatever drainage, the snow pile moving. All that stuff is open. And I don't think you actually can properly approve it tonight, even if, in, even if you can when those issues are answered. But more to the point, I don't think you have to. And I know you're not <laughs> feeling railroaded in, in, in any sense, but I think there are enough open questions that you should continue this for a very short period, as short as the information can come in, uh, so that you're moving at criterion's pace uh, and deal with it then when everybody can see the final plan. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's so that if you need a response. Um, can I, I mean, yeah, please. I, I, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that I, I'm not sure on this particular case, but I know on other cases where um, we have gotten um, advice from town council that the, um, the, um, the, the clause that he referenced about, or the sentence that he referenced about the um, building inspector giving, being able to provide it, um, 
uh, a permit after 60 days if we don't act in in his in the town council's estimation means that it's um, um, constructive, approval. constructive approval that was former town yes. council I assume because new uh, not yes not really honest. yes yeah okay. uh, actually I think it was the two former um, uh, councils the the first time I saw that was from um, Ellen is that in I'm not town council, but that is an exactly correct interpretation. The CPDC approval is a precondition for the building that's for the zoning you know, bylaw structure. And, in, in, and then the bylaw says that you cannot go to the building inspector uh, until you've either approved the, the site plan or 60 days have expired from the uh, certification by the town planner that the uh, uh, submission is complete. And that is the language of constructive approval. I mean, I can't give you a Supreme Court argument here tonight, but your town council was exactly correct. Yeah, I mean, clearly there's gonna be a difference of, a, of perspective on, on this one. Um, but I mean, I think we're at a point where many of the concerns have been addressed. Not all of them will ever be addressed. Um, but personally, I'm feeling comfortable like we can move forward on this tonight. What issues do you feel have not been addressed? Because right now it seems to me that parking is the, the one factor. We've got screening on the north side. We've eliminated two spots from the, from the front lot line. Uh, right now it seems to be the, the, the parking number and the parking along the, uh, along the school facade. Right. Which they're uh, not going to concede. Okay. I mean, I, we have no way of forcing them to do that. Uh, I understand. You're right. The plan has improved a lot tonight. Uh, if the snow gets snow pile gets moved toward the rear fence, uh, that'll be another improvement. Um, more screening uh, along the uh, right-hand property line, uh, that's another improvement. So the issue that hasn't been addressed, part, the number of parking spaces, we're not happy with the result, but it, I can't say it hasn't been addressed. But what hasn't been addressed is a point I made earlier, Mr. Salter then came back to it, uh, and perhaps one or two others, which is why can't, um, can we go back to the, the site plan, I guess the first sheet of No, not actually, this is, this is before the playground got turned and, and, uh, and <coughs> Jack's layout sheet. Yeah, and sheet one. Okay. So you've got a large border here, and we talked about the trees last time, and, and we talked about the trees in the parking lot, um, and you've got a, a fairly large space here. Um, if this is 30 by 40, I think, I heard for the revised playground, then just by eye, that's fine. Um, and what's that? No, that's, that's, well, 25 or more. Oh, 20, okay, maybe 25. That's fine. Um, you could you could shrink those margins, as I said, uh, without without making doing any violence to the program, even making any parents walk farther, uh, other than you know, five feet farther over on this side. Shrink those margins. Put in three rows of parking, as shown on the plan that's next next to Mr. Safina that he's that he's holding, perhaps, um, and put some of the parking back here. <coughs> the handicap spaces, I understand, need to be up near the building, uh, near near the entrances. Um, I'm not sure that two of them need to be opposite the existing house rather than having the four of them as far back as possible and then take the other regular spaces and move them back here. So we're not talking about number at all, but this, the reconfiguration of the parking lot has not been addressed and that's one of the other reasons that I think, this, I think you should seek that information, whether, that, whether they have any problem doing that. Um, with the same 38 spaces, the, the two moved up to the corner, as they said, from the front. The handicapped <coughs> along this row, and the other non-handicapped, however, I haven't done an exact count, but a number of them go into a third row of parking here. At least on that plan, we've got seven spaces in that third row. So it's not a, not a trivial move. Um, that's what hasn't been addressed. Mayor? Well, okay. Hey, one second. Sure. Because I would argue that in a lot of ways it has been addressed. I mean, Configured the parking lot. Configured the parking lot from the plan that was submitted last time. 
it's not a T anymore. And all those, there were a number of abutters along, was it Temple Street? There are a lot of concerns, I, I, and I feel like that that's been. Yeah, no, I didn't mean from addressed. last time to tonight. I mean, it hasn't been addressed tonight. Okay, okay. Do we think, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Bob Salter again, and this would be the last time I was. <laughs> um, I, first, I, I want to tell you that I've been on your side of the table, a volunteer in town, and I, we appreciate the job you do as the volunteer doing this hard work in town. And I can understand how you would want to be done with it today, okay? Um, but on the other hand, um, I think it is worth considering if there was a way to push more parking into the back without taking, you know, without taking spots from them, but a way of disguising it and making it so that it wasn't as visible. And I think it's worth the time to do that. And then the other point I wanted to make is, isn't it ironic that you are debating a zoning bylaw that's requiring you to make a decision when the people on the other side of the table are exempt from the zoning bylaws. That just strikes me as a very ironic situation. It certainly puts us in a situation for sure. Perhaps the town should be more aware that the Dover Amendment is a more insidious enemy than 40B. And next time those come around, you'll all be here again. George? Um, I, am, I am torn in this conversation about allocating parking. The more we put parking spaces in the back, the more we invite traffic on this driveway. There's more move, car movement back and forth. This is something to consider. Um, this driveway will see more use, perhaps uh, a two-way move of cars, some coming in, some coming out. You know, from a, you know, from a sustainability standpoint, you would want to use the perimeter of any asphalt area for parking as opposed to drive to the parking. So, again, efficiency, car movements. You know, I totally understand the concerns of the one about it on the location of the parking. Uh, on the other hand, having like a driver which is unutilized just to drive to parking, that's going to make a lot of sense. Especially when we look at our master plan, which calls for a balance of buildings, roads, and landscape. And that goes to my second point of the size of this complex is arguably larger than most houses in that area, and we'll be through that. It's bringing the driveway closer to the building basically puts more emphasis, gives the gives uh, the perception that there is more built in a disturbed area than, uh, than around the other lots. And basically unbalances the neighborhood. We've looked at this, we've described it in the master plan, we try to keep that balance intact. <coughs> I guess the, the key issue here is this buffer zone between the driveway and the building, which is peppered with trees, I guess, the circles that I see yeah. are trees. Uh, I would argue, I mean, we're trying to, uh, to split the two from each other while we want perhaps to, uh, to create some angles to view what is there and not hide it behind a row of trees. That balance is not achieved by you know, negating what is there and uh, looking at very uh, thin slices of the pie and don't understand how things interact with each other. Any architect will tell you that, any planner will tell you that. You have to accept what is there and work with the elements to transition and balance those. So I heard about the grading that uh, Mr. Weston described, that there's a grading difference. Um, I would argue that you know, that cross-section that cuts through the site north to south is something that we should be looking at and trying to understand better before we begin to shift parking spaces or move the driveway closer to the door. I think it's, to me, to my sense, it looks uh, fairly balanced right now. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Uh, I'm
I'm not sure what you're arguing for. Are, are, you, are you saying you like it? Or are you yeah. thinking? Anything else? Okay. I think uh, we're at a point where we can close the. Move that the CPDC close the public hearing for the site plan review uh, at 186 190 Summer Avenue for a Criterion Child Enrichment. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? All right. Hmm. Let's turn our attention to the site plan decision. So, uh, um, just a comment. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the idea uh, that was brought up about the um, shifting the um, more spaces in the back, we're really only talking about those seven spaces that, um, that are in between the two um, uh, handicapped spaces. Um, you know, my we, we actually end up with a lot more, by doing all that, you end up with a lot more pavement back there because you've got to shift those spaces back and then add an entire additional drive aisle in order to get to those spaces, which need to be wider. Then you need to add, add a, a couple more spaces to accommodate for the spaces that you just eliminated so actually, when you're looking down, it, first of all, that will be, a, 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 I'm going to say, a very large paved area there in the back. Um, and, and really not all that, um, not all that safe an environment. I mean, if we have kids with strollers um, from a third drive aisle in the, in the middle of some spaces there, really, I, I just, I, um, um, context is aside, I, I just don't think that um, I don't think that could work. <coughs> I, I, I just don't physically. It doesn't. It doesn't. It does a lot more harm than good. That one laid out. So anyways, I just wanted to. Thank yeah, you. no, thank you. That's helpful. So. Jesse, the site plan you review decision. Um, yeah, you want the one that's separated <coughs> from your desk. <coughs> that's the most updated. Does this include? What does this include as far as? So we have a um, a couple. I left the blanks um, based on what the discussion would be tonight. So um, it would be page five of seven. You see some placeholders for. Potential revised site plan, revised lighting plan, revised grading facility, drainage plan. So we need to talk about those. And then per the discussion from the applicant to modify the conditions related to landscaping and lighting <coughs> hours. Um, so uh, those will need to be amended. What? Let's, maybe let's just inventory the conditions that have been raised today. Okay, is this this is the one which is is Statement. draft dated December eighth? Yeah, it should just be okay. a separate document on its own yep. on your desk. So, yeah, maybe I did this part. Let, let's just make sure we've got all the conditions that have been agreed to today. One was we're going to move those two parking spaces to the back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two was, um, I'm forgetting your name, I'm sorry, but. Cinda. Lucinda? Cinda. Cinda, sorry. Cinda's um, we're going to have a stockade fence from along her property line. And then we're also going to have a stockade fence continue up the property line all the way, I think, to the edge, the, the bottom corner of the building. Uh, the back of the existing, no, yeah. what, in line. What we, agreed, what we agreed to was to the back of this retained. Oh, <coughs> I'm glad you spoke So the up fence will come along there. Um, and we, we looked at the assessor's map, and this is all the school property. So the, the wood fence will come along there. 
and then we'll add the arbor vitae to the back of the historic house. Okay, thank you. Um, we've got the um, fire truck extension, for lack of a better term. Do we talk about the arbor vitae? That was mentioned, but was that, is that different than what? Arbor vitae's are from that point. From the end of the fence to the back of the historic house. <coughs> the snow pile, did we, or well, is that tied in with the fire? It's tied, tied in, in with the uh, additional provision for the safety vehicles. So yeah, it would be the uh, the turning, the turnaround, and however we need to then adjust. Right. Okay. It's kind of fun. Yes. I, I, I thought it was pretty much agreed that the snow pile would move to the east, to the rear lot line, and not to the south when that turnaround was done. Mr. Safina, I think, raised that issue. That's right. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll write the condition like that. Thank you. Is there anything else that came up tonight as far as conditions? <coughs> well, not conditions, but oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess we would the need a new right. uh, lighting plan to go um, along with the changes that you mentioned. We want to have a new landscaping plan as well. Show all those fences and planting. Gaining additional landscaping while reducing some of those two front parking areas. And then, <coughs> as a result, we would also get a revised site plan showing the changes in the parking spaces up front and any additional changes to the drainage plan. I guess that would be on this, the drainage plan, but any changes to the turnaround for the mm -hmm. fire apparatus? Well, we, um, yep. I'm not sure if we, if we have an as-built equivalent for the site plan, but that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. The, a plan that, that uh, shows all <coughs> of the accommodations and agreements that, that we've discussed. Well, I, I think you need to redo the plan anyways for um, uh, to deal to get for the fire and safety the yeah. fire um, piece done and also the drainage. Um, we do a, do a new so, plan so incorporating all the components mm -hmm. right. in the conditions and in, in the staff comments, specifically the town engineer's comments in this review letter. Yes. Yes. So the the condition for the decision should be that the that, that we receive that plan, not that it has necessarily the specific um, elements in the decision proper. Some of them we're not, I don't think that we are, that we can condition approval on, but we can certainly condition approval on getting the revised plan. Okay. What about a signage plan? Well, we've talked a lot about modifications to the illumination of the sign and some of the other signs on the site. I think everything's on there. I think with right. the with the um, revised lighting plan, that that should do that. And the site plan should have that added stop sign. Is that on it that's now? On, it's that's on, on there now. now. Yeah. Did you have a comment? Question? I, I did. I just um, I discussed. Uh, the request for trees that are shown on the markup that I submitted in the front corner. Um, so you're requiring a new landscape plan, but I think you need to say what the landscaping plan needs to include. So if, if you if you agree with this, I, I would request that you say it, and then the revised plan. I I, I'm, I'm concerned about planting at the driveway ends. That we we have the row of existing trees. We've got the ginkgo trees. We've got the low understory. Um, but to add more. Uh, landscaping at the driveway when we're taking those two spaces off and we're trying to give sight lines to the sidewalk, the drive lanes, and what's happening on the street, this doesn't seem like a place that I would advocate for more landscaping. Yeah, I would agree. Okay, well, I wasn't suggesting to simply extend the row of trees out to the street, but something in that space. And on the other side of the driveway where the two spaces were, I don't know if you're inclined to That's require. right. No, you're right. We said that we should extend the landscaping where those two spots are being eliminated. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. We're not going to just be a pile of dirt or something. No, but it won't, yeah, it'll be grass. It won't be perennial or bushes, it'll be just grass. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. The extension of the existing lawn there. And, and if, I, if I made what I said earlier, as to anything that you're le simply leaving to the HDC, um, that is the uh, appearance of the building, the trim, <coughs> uh, that's fine. I, uh, I think you should just leave it to them and not make a recommendation. If it's not, if it's not in your purview, then no, there shouldn't be any piping on. Leave it to them. Okay. Yep. My request. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can go ahead. I just I didn't get a, actually any clarification on the monument sign since those two spots are going to be removed. Can that be pulled back in closer to the house? I think we're. You know, I, I understand that when when the public hearings close, I think it's one thing to if there's a, a mistake in what was agreed to for uh, Mr. Krieger or okay, that's fair. Mr. Maxwell, but I think now to start advocating for positions again. It wasn't clarified to me when yeah. I asked originally. Okay, so I'll, I'll ask it. Is that going to be, what, are you planning to move the sign in light of the fact that you've? No, we think it's, we think it's far enough back. Okay, so you're going to leave it where it Correct. is. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other conditions that? We have not accounted for. I'm sure Jesse's going through her copious notes. When you're, think, when you're thinking about the revised plan in terms of the turnaround, we'll want to make sure that there would be additional signage or somehow marked that there would be no parking there. The fire chief, I did speak with him today about his memo, yeah. and he wants to be clear that there will be no parking or queuing in that space. So we want to make sure that maybe an additional sign in that uh, area. Additional sign in that area. We, we've, we've got four signs. If yeah, I'm talking about when you add the um, the turnaround. Got it. Yeah, just know just so that vehicles don't queue back there. It could happen. Yeah. And then we've got these three other conditions that we need to draft. Is that correct? Uh, by site plan, layout yeah, so plan. Yeah, so those were like placeholders <coughs> per the discussion. So we need to add language to those. Did you mention hours of lighting? Yeah, and then also revise the language in there. So we can go through them if you want. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. That language was added in the electronic version. That when I read through the, the packet, but it was so there. there was language, but um, we need to modify. modify it. Right now we have a time of 6 p.m. Oh, I know that, but I, I thought his language was verbatim in this paragraph on the markup. I don't see it here, but in the in the copy that has the track changes, the electronic copy, it seemed to have the language in the mm. This was the electronic copy that you saw? Here? I just remember track changes. Mm. I don't know if it did track changes for this one. Track changes. Mm. Yeah, so for a revised site plan. Mm -hmm. So we want to um, have them submit that to town planner, town engineer, and fire chief. For review and approval. Um, do we want to call out the specifics? Yeah, yes. of the conditions yes. we just yeah. walked through, yes. absolutely. Yeah, the following. The following. Which will be the uh, fire truck turnaround. The removal and related signage. Yeah, fire truck turnaround and signage. Removal of the two 
parking spaces. We want to say nearest summer app. Removal and relocating, is that what? Is that what yeah. 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 And relocation to rear parking area. What else on the site plan? Extension of the lawn to cover up those two spots. And then you've got the fencing that we discussed earlier. And then the additional upper vitees. <coughs> fencing. Stockade fence. Is the, um, is the fencing, are you planning on um, painting that at all or is that going to be wood? It'll be wood and painted, and what we call it out is stockade. We actually have it on the elevation page where it's four feet of solid <coughs> and then 12 inches of lattice at the very top of the cap. Okay, so that'll be on both on both um, uh, all perimeters where it's called out. Yes, and we'll we'll adjust the plan to show that. Actually, we we'd like that fence to be stained, not painted. Stained. Yes. So, okay. Stockade fencing should be shown on northern. Is oh. that the detail right there, Mark? Yes. Okay. Sheet A901. So the um, fence, uh, stockade fencing to be shown on northern. Can we call that wooden fence? Wooden fencing to be shown on northern side. Property from what are we saying? From the, the, the retaining wall? From the, from <coughs> the, the, the stair. basement stair, retaining wall to the uh, inside corner of the abutting property. And that's the school property. Mr. Chairman, one uh, clarification? No. No. The, yeah. the the drawing, looking at the hard copy of that, says it's six feet. Uh, apparently five plus one or four and a half plus one and a half. Unless I'm, can't, unless I'm misreading that number. This is six feet. Yeah, I thought you said four plus one. Four feet, one foot of open trellis, four inches, four inches, four inches, and there's four oh, inches. Okay, the right. so sorry. It, yeah, it, it will be six feet. Six yep. overall. Yep. Anything else in the landscape plan? To do the upper varieties? Is that going to be on the landscape plan? Yes. Yeah. It should be, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we done with this site plan condition. You want to just read it back, make sure we're all on the same page? Uh, <coughs> the applicant shall submit to the town planner, town engineer, and fire chief for review and approval. <coughs> A revised site plan that depicts the following. Fire truck turnaround, removal of the two parking spaces near Summer Avenue, and relocation of the spaces to the rear parking area. Extension of lawn, um, extension of lawn to replace. Extension the two or retention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to replace the two parking spaces. Uh, stained wooden stockade fencing to be shown on the northern side of the property line from the basement stair to the inside corner of the abutting property. George? Uh, Providees change the uh, redesign of the infiltration system. You didn't have to oh, the yeah. Well, those go on the landscape plan. On the, yeah, we'll do those on the landscape. I just didn't know if you were detailing it. Detailing the items a lot. <laughs> but the change uh, change the revised design of the infiltration system should be on the site plan. So we're gonna on the site plan or the drainage we have a grading drainage and utility oh, plan. You want to work. Okay. <coughs> plan. Okay. We were going we were going to phrase the um, fire truck turnaround condition to account for what Nick's comment was about how we wanted so 
I'm going to butcher this, but the snow pile can go east and not south. Yeah. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Yep, which also shows relocation of snow storage. Uh, toward, basically, toward the eastern property line. Toward the eastern property line. Will the lighting our language be read to the, to the group? Yes, we'll get to yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, we'll but yeah, we're not there yet. Okay. That's the next one. Um, okay, so we're ready for a language for the lighting plan? Yes. All right, so um, same thing. Uh, applicant to submit a revised lighting plan to the town planner and town engineer. Um, do we want to just reference the town planner memo? Um, that would address our concerns with the 12 foot issue with the poles, the reduction of the two bollards. Right. So it's. Or do we want to actually specifically uh, call it out? We can just call list. It out. I think we'll call we it can out. list them. Okay. Yeah, just All right. it's, yeah. it's the 12 foot maximum pole light. Show 12 foot max pole light, okay? We're going to eliminate. <laughs> One bollard at the rear of the building. An elimination of one bollard at rear building. We're going to eliminate the uh, the three floodlights. I thought we said two bollards. No, you well, asked for two. You asked for two, one but that we can do easily yeah. without impacting the egress plan. We're going to eliminate the floodlights. We're going to replace the rear barn light with a type C fixture. And we're going to use the small uh, two inch diameter um, halogen ground lights at the sign. Need to read that back or? Uh, <coughs> shall submit a revised lighting plan to the town planner, town engineer for review and approval that will depict a 12 foot pole height, elimination of one bollard at the rear of the building, elimination of floodlights, and replacement of the rear barn light with type, lighting type C fixture, and <coughs> the, re the use of two inch diameter ground lights for the sign. Mm hmm. Okay, good. All right. And then revise grading drainage and utility question, pen. Question. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. Sorry. The, um, can any lighting be moved back if the first two par parking spaces are gone? Yes. Does that affect we the lighting? We can move that first pole back. Okay. okay. Is that a request? Yeah. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and relocation <laughs> of pole light near entrance. Okay, good. Anything else on the lighting plan? All right. Yeah, please. <laughs> Is there going to be language that uh, uh, anything that within the HTC's purview is subject to their approval or are you putting it on? Um, I don't know. Let's come back to that, though. We've got one more. We've got the revised grading, drainage, and utility plan. We'll do that, and then we'll, we'll come back to that. Yes, that's right. 
All right, so revised grading drainage and utility plan. That'll go also to the town planner and town engineer for review and approval. Town engineer. Is George still? George? I'm here. All right, how, how would you like, how would you, what, what would you suggest for this? Um, uh, revised uh, drainage plan eliminating the um, surcharged uh, catch basin lines. And that will have need to be a note at this time, George, because of the time of season. Um, yeah, I, I mean, prior to construction. We have it right now prior to the issuance of a building permit. Uh, in my opinion, that's too late. So you want it? Um, I like, I just, uh, yeah, you, you can, I, I just assume leave it loosely, loose, and, I, and I'll have to get on Jack <laughs> and the owners. I mean, but uh, I think prior to, Prior to any construction. We have, a, we have prior to that. We do have some, a few that are prior to the start of construction. We can move it up to that if, if you want. So, so we're going to move. We normally hold a pre construction meeting well before the building permit application, right? Yes. Well, so, somewhat concurrently. But before the start of construction, we will hold a pre construction meeting. Okay, that's why that's why I was saying prior to any construction, a new test pit shall be uh, performed uh, to determine uh, alterations to alterations or relocations of the infiltration system number two, Jack. Yes. To eliminate surcharge uh, drain line conditions. So you want the test pits and the plan revised prior to the start of construction. Yep. Prior to the start of construction, applicant to submit to town planner and town engineer. For review and approval, a revised drainage plan eliminating the surcharge of the catch basins. Check the rear catch basin. Revised drainage plans altering the elevation of or relocating the location of infiltration system number two. Sorry, George, one more time. <laughs> altering, <laughs> altering the elevations of or relocating the infiltration system number two. Right in the elimination of the surcharge drain lines. That has to happen as a result of it. So. Got all that? In order to do it. Prior to the start of the construction, applicant shall submit to the town plan or town engineer revised drainage plan. Uh, depicting alterations in the elevations <coughs> of or relocating infiltration system number true number two and elimination surcharge of surcharge drain lines. <coughs> okay. <coughs> New vocabulary. Okay. I think that's all of the plans. Um, landscape plan. Oh yeah, sorry. Sorry. That wasn't in the site plan. Oh no, you're right. Never mind. <laughs> I got you confused. Yeah, I'm all screwed up. <laughs>
the same thing, um, town planner and town engineer for review and approval. Revised landscape plan depicting uh, the arbor variety, right? to that identification of any additional trees that may need to be removed due to the site plan changes. Could you repeat that? Identification. Identify, uh, in the landscaping plan, it would help to identify any additional large trees that may need to be removed because of the relocation of the parking area or the reconfiguration. Thank you. Yes. And just one other thing. <coughs> The, I heard that the dumpster is going to get moved back with the two spaces being relocated there, but that they would have the same level of landscaping just farther back. Mm -hmm. So I guess that needs to be shown. Put that sure. straight back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that it for the landscape plan? Mm -hmm. So. Now, there was a request for language or related to the historic district. <laughs> that would work. No, I, I, think, I, I think we'd be fine leaving that alone because yeah. the historic yeah. district jurisdiction is what it is. Right. That sounds good. <clears throat> so then on page six of eight, we needed to amend the language shown for the landscaping condition as well as the lighting condition. I think Mr. Um, Margolin had some suggested language for both in your packet. Um, that would be on page um, 46. <coughs> Of your best packets and 47. Your lighting, it's if no business is being conducted on the premises. Turned off after dark, and no business is being conducted on the premises. Mm -hmm. Instead of exit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's fine, I think. Yeah. So we will amend that condition can with your language. Yes. Okay. That says all parking lot lighting. I heard that all exterior lighting, so the sign lighting and barn lighting, every, I thought everything exterior was going off at that time. I think the requested language, I think, was all lighting except security lighting. No, but you said lighting. all parking lot lighting, then. Yes, all parking lot lighting except for security lighting would be turned off after that if no business is being conducted. And my, and my point is that it shouldn't just be all parking lot lighting. Could we be change that to all exterior, all exterior lighting? Yes. That's fine. Bob, Dr. Little was worried about if the police have any concern about that, but I, I wouldn't foresee that. No. They bring their lights with them. Yeah. So that's <laughs> so yeah. So all exterior lighting. Is fine. And that except, except for security. Yep. And then that language will also be carried onto page seven of eight under lighting as well. I can guarantee you that if the chief of police tells says that you should be keeping some lighting on, then. Um, you will then be. You'll be keeping <laughs> yes, lighting yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
with all due respect to this process, right? I yeah. <laughs> not disagreeing. <clears throat> Um, so then for the condition related to landscaping, the, the concern is that um, if they want to occupy the building prior to the appropriate planting season, if it doesn't line up appropriately, they don't want to be held up for their occupancy permit. So. Um, we had put in a condition for a bond, but we believe that needs to be modified. Okay. Yeah. What page is this? On page six, six of eight. Can you have any um, recommended language where we can be comfortable <coughs> knowing that the landscaping won't be forgotten. I think I think it would be appropriate to uh, call it a uh, uh, temporary certificate of occupancy contingent upon the landscaping being completed by the end of the next growing or the, the next growing season. Uh, maybe that's a little imprecise, but you know, by November first, that mark is that typically the growing season. By no, by the next November first. Well. I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, we, we don't know what the time frame is. It, it could be spring or... If there's a bond requirement, I think perhaps it should be uh, specified. Uh, maybe, I think, John, you had suggested to, uh, to the cost of uh, the landscaping. Yeah. We typically mm -hmm. defer to the town engineer to estimate the value of the bond. That's the it would be for the use. landscaping. It wouldn't be... It, it would be specifically for that. We, we always ask the town engineer to assist with those quantities and costs. Well, would, would the lawn approximate the value of the landscaping? Yes. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. The value of the landscaping and the cost to install it. So what is that? I have no idea. <laughs> Rough guess. <laughs> <laughs> At least 30 grand. I mean, it, it, it seems to me that if it's a temporary certificate of occupancy contingent upon the landscaping being completed by a, a certain date, and we could specify the end of the growing season, then if they don't do that, that temporary certificate of occupancy could be revoked. Yeah, but it doesn't work. landscaping has nothing to do with occupancy. It's the building. The building inspector only looks at the building. Most developers don't argue that uh, that bond. Uh, developers come in here to put houses up, and, and uh, they have to put up bonds to finish the work, and they don't object to it. Very patient man for an educator of children, by the way. <laughs> George? No, I, I just, Mr. Chairman, if I may ask, I mean, what, what's the applicant's proposed timetable construction? Polly can su suggest is that it behooves them to make sure that as they get to the appropriate uh, season in the uh, fall, they start installing landscaping and they avoid that issue. Yeah, that's The bond solves the problem. That's the way we always This problem is with temporary uh, certificate of occupancy with the building inspector. It doesn't work. No. That, that, that's fine. The bond? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> but we, 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 we think it should have some kind of specificity, like the actual cost of the landscaping or value of the landscaping, subject to the was it the town? Yeah. So here? typically, what we do is um, we'll get a like a quantity and estimate from the applicant, and the town engineer will review that, and he'll make recommendations on a final amount. If there is a discrepancy or you feel that that's not an appropriate amount, you can always come back to this body and suggest an alternative amount. That's fine. No, we normally reach a reasonable agreement. So we'll leave that language as is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <coughs> 
and then just the lighting clause in the, on the next page just needs to be amended so that it's the yep. same as yep. the number three. This, yeah. Yep. <coughs> <coughs> fair to say that once this is all typed up and signed it'll be shared with everybody that needs to get a copy yes. okay do you have a motion I guess I'm stuck being the the instigator <laughs> move that the CPDC approve the site plan review decision for the project at 186 190 Summer Avenue Criterion Child in Richmond as amended second all those in favor Opposed? It's a good plan, but I object to the use in that neighborhood. That's my prerogative. All right. Um, question for you. Um, as a as a process, um, I know that typically you post um, if on for some applications you post stuff up. Um, on the website, at least on the old website you used to. Yep. Um, on the planning page, you used to post um, material up. So in a case like this, and, and typically it would be the decision or the plan, right, that would get posted up. In a case like this, would you post up the, this draft plan? And then uh, I guess where I'm going is once you get a final plan that you, the, the town has approved, do you then post that up? We don't typically, no. Hmm. We probably should consider it. Well, they're going to submit electronic plans to you, right? Yeah, we require that. Hmm? Yeah, we require that. I would, I would just post them that way. People have access to them. They can yeah. see that the changes are made. and They won't be calling you every two seconds mm -hmm. to see the ask you post. Yeah, we've been posting all the material. Mm -hmm. um, so, we, I mean, it's no problem to do that. Well, I mean, just in the abstract, it would be sort of nice if the town made available uh, via the website the, the int every uh, approved site plan, you know, given that we have them in electronic form. Because it would be nice in many cases to be able to go back and take a look. That's a workload process we'll have to figure out. I, I understand, uh, more than most. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Good. Thank you, everybody. Unfortunately, we're not done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're uh, an A&R? Yes. Yes, we have yes. the A&R. <laughs> Next order of business, approval not required for 186-190 Summer Avenue. Thanks. Gina, Jesse, you want to? Thank you for all the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. What screen are we on, Jack? Right here? 
four, so we got to get out Submitted in your plans, it was tucked in as um, sheet three of five in Jack Sullivan's plan. Um, I can let Jack go into the details, um, but you do have a m memo from the town engineer um, recommending endorsement in your plan, and we have the mylars available. <coughs> so, I don't know if you want. I'll to. be very quick. Um, you know, this property it's three parcels of land. This plan basically merges those parcels all into one. The sufficient frontage on Summer Ave, insufficient land area for this. I agree with everything except his last statement. This is the last statement isn't required. Only frontage shows. What? <laughs> <laughs> I said because oh, only frontage is required. Area isn't. <laughs> but yes, Jack's correct in the statement. Okay. Every time you get a project and ready, you must be like, oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <Exactly. laughs> we like to give Jack a hot time. That's all. I think it's great. <laughs> Since Move. he used to work here, you know, we have to make sure he's on the Okay, so well, let's move that the CPDC approve or endorse the uh, ANR plan for the combination of properties in, in the 190s of South Street. I'm sorry. Oh. No, wrong one. 186. <laughs> 186. 186 to, to uh, 190 Summer Ave. Yes. All those in favor? Wait, who seconded? Oh, I'm sorry. I did. Okay. All those in favor? All right. Yeah, get out the magic pen. Agenda item while you sign to talk yeah. about zoning priorities, just given the hour. Thank, thank you all. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate we'll it. be in touch. <coughs> we're going to have to measure so long. We'll talk to you about it later. Okay. Thank you. Definitely um, figure that out. Okay. okay. Given the hour, we're going to talk while you sign. How's Plow that? through it. So, all right. Bye -bye. So the the two items left for us to go over are the um, zoning. What's left under the zoning update project, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the Tennessee gas line. So as far as the zoning update project, um, we gave you a chart of kind of what's been completed and when, and then um, what exists currently in draft form from VHB. So um, we're waiting to hear from the AG on both the September and the November zoning amendments that were passed. Um, so those are in the queue. And just by way of summary, and um, I know it was, seems like a long time ago, even though it wasn't that long ago. Um, <laughs> Five sessions of town <laughs> meetings ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, in September, we did the medical marijuana and section, section one, one failed. failed. Section, section three two. passed. And the deletion of wetlands. Right. And a little bit of cleanup. So then in November, we did kind of the um, four elements of the zoning bylaw, the definitions, um, accessory apartments, site plan review, nursing home and assisted living. Uh, we did a little more tweaking of medical marijuana, <laughs> dimensional controls, non-conforming. We uh, included an administration section, applicability, and adoption and amendment. Um, we also had a landscape bylaw. So what's left is um, some type of either um, planned unit, well, planned unit development, planned residential development, um, aqua protection, parking, signs, 
graphics and inclusionary bylaw if we want to go there. So um, the reason we're bringing this up is um, we had anticipated and hoped that we could move forward for annual town <coughs> meeting for some additional work on zoning. Um, the town manager gave us a memo that we also included that said basically if you want to get something on the uh, town meeting, annual town meeting um, warrant, everything has to be in final form, including the public hearing by February 3rd. So you need it all done tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it needed to be done and, and already advertised. So that's not going to work. Was there an explanation? Yes. A very long one in the um, email, I think, was, that was included. Uh, 61 of yours. December 6th. Yep, it's a very strongly worded memo from the town manager saying that um, that oh, minute changes. <clears throat> we're not going to do what we did before because there were so many issues with when we had the public hearing and when we were getting drafts. So to make it very simple and very clean, mm, okay. we need to have certain deadlines. So that takes us to subsequent town meeting, which is. Um, in November of 2015, which means everything has to be in final form, including the public hearings, by August 13th. So um, that's actually not that far off. Um, the <laughs> Zoning Advisory Committee <coughs> is having one final meeting at the end of the month. Um, and the chair of the Zoning Advisory Committee has asked that we begin posting some of the drafts. And Jeff and Jesse and I met, and we realized that, for example, signs, town council has reviewed it and done a lot of work on the VHB draft, but CPDC hasn't seen it. And it just didn't seem right that we would start posting these very fragmented um, pieces without more discussion here. So we were going to suggest that either CPDC weigh in on that or we have some conversation about you know at what point do we post the very rough drafts that we have and would it be more confusing to post something that hasn't quite been vetted than to just say we're, <coughs> we're working on it and this is our these are our priorities going forward and that's if whatever drafts we want to post, whether or not we want to consider which ones we're actually going to move forward in November. We don't want right. to confuse if we're only going to take up so many. Right. We don't want to post something that mm, isn't necessarily going to be a priority. So what do we? What was the priority between now and the 4th of July? Okay. This um, is Is VHB January. still engaged? <laughs> we're waiting for a final bill, but yes. Um. Uh, I should rephrase that question. Will they continue to be engaged? No. Right. So we're we're we're, th we're at the end. We're oh. we're done. Okay. And the reason it's important to talk about this now, to the extent that we have time, which we don't really, but um, is because we're only going to have one meeting in February because there's now a February town meeting um, the second CPDC meeting has to be canceled here's my take is I do not think that um, I, I think that parking both parking and signs is a long discussion yep um, and I think that um, uh, I, I planned unit development and planned residential development um, um, probably be, could be looked at together or in, in concert with, with each other, not for any reason, but they're sort of of the same um, ilk and, and aquifer protection district could look, be looked at um, cause, uh, uh, by itself. And, and I guess <coughs> I would recommend either moving forward with the planned developments or aquifer protection or some combination thereof? Well, the aquifer protection is the 
and, and speaking of both of my uh, my Zach knowledge and, and so forth, the changes in aquifer protection are small. Yep. Okay. Basically, we're we're loosening it up to match the uh, the prevailing state uh, understanding. Planned unit development, planned residential development is primarily um, recodification for clarity. I believe, I don't think we were, were envisioning any uh, <coughs> changes that needed to be uh, vetted, if you will, or, or heavily reviewed. We do need to do some public education on those things so people understand, you know, the purpose and the 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 boundaries of those things but that's not something that the cpdc review necessarily is, is involved in um so we should be able to handle for the cpdc review all three of the section four yep. pieces in i mean for expeditiously yeah parking and signs obviously are important yeah the inclusionary bylaw I would suggest if we have a draft of that, uh, just find a place on the agenda and take the time to review it. But the parking and the signs and the graphics, which to a certain extent goes with both of them, uh, are the ones that we should spend some spend actual time on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I, I guess I'm, hard drive. Oh, sorry. I'm in agreement. Um, but I that's did, good background. I do want to make the point that um, uh, the EDC does want to be heavily involved in the signs, as I'm sure you're not surprised. Sure. Um, so that being said, I, I also way. agree with the, the time and outreach that's going to be needed with those particular topics. So. Mm -hmm. On the topic of signs, <clears throat> there's a ZBA meeting Thursday night for uh, the Cumberland Farms gas station over in uh, uh, near REI. Yeah, near REI, which is Business B. Right. And they're requesting the LED pump toppers. Yeah. Um, which, if you're familiar with the ones that are up here on uh, on South and at the corner of South and Main, at the six eleven, they flash credit crash credit cash right, and they don't flash at the same time. So Were I know they, they were only requesting. Were they permitted to flash? Huh? Were they permitted they to flash? No. Did they ask for them to flash? I don't remember any of that, and I was at the ZBA meeting. Hmm. So they flash. They flash about every two seconds. The thing is, they don't flash at the same time. So there's six signs. They're double-sided. There are not uh, six prices, right? Three for each cash and credit. And then they're they're sort of like doing this. Yeah. So that's not business mm -hmm. B. I understand, but this is business B. If they permit it there, you're going to get the little Christmas tree effect. On the other two gas stations here. It's well, how do we get rid of it? Well, I'm going to try <laughs> Business and go. Well, I think, I think <coughs> it um, shouldn't be flashing. If anything, they requested a variance for the LED, right? Yes, but they flash. Yeah, yeah no, we could. That doesn't we can have, Yeah. We could our have code our enforcement guide. Yeah, change. I mean, that's, <coughs> that is technically an animated sign, yeah. which is prohibited. Right. right. But ZBA is it's hard on this on Thursday. It, so. It's harder to do after the fact yeah. than before. Yeah. Cut it off. I have no problem with the LED light. I think it's great and makes it more efficient to, it uh, right. to express to the, the price. But board. we never approved flashing. I'm just concerned that that's business B, and I know it's way over there. But yeah. if they approve it there, I don't see how they can tell somebody else they can't do it here. And then, and then Jiffy Lou's going to come back. And right. Somebody yeah. else will come back. And so yep. That's Thursday night. I don't know if we want to send them something. I'm going to try and go. We can talk to Glenn. All right. Okay. So we'll um, <coughs> we'll focus this year on the three sections that are uh, section four. Yep. Then I saw there was a letter that you drafted in my name for the other boards and committees. I read it when I got here. It's, it's fine. <coughs> yeah, this was um, similar to what we did with the Zoning Advisory Committee. So um, this is seeking input from not only the boards and committees, but also um, like the DRT staff, other town staff that may. Are we going to focus them in on just those three topics, though? Could PRD and aquifer? Um, 
I think we probably want to request input in general. Um, say we can maybe advise, we can maybe revise this to say that the CPDC has decided to focus on. Yeah, but open it up to all comments. That's fine. Because I know that conservation specifically will have some changes on the PRD. Yeah, we'll want to make sure they're. Yeah. After so. town meeting, I want to make sure they're yeah. heavily involved. Um, so this sort of this um, prioritization should allow us. I mean, if we if we deal with these uh, this section four now, um, uh, in advance of what was that date? November. Um, August. August. Yeah, uh, August twenty. So then w the plan would be to after we after we address these is to pick up one of the more. I'm going to say the the um, uh, we either parking or signage and take that where we have a little bit more time and we can focus on one mm -hmm. through the fall summer fall yeah. winter um, and when we get done we get done. Yeah, I would say signs. Yeah, because I don't know what impact we can have on parking yeah. because of the physical asset that's involved with that. Mm. that we don't have any control over necessarily. I think you're right. I think signs float to the top. And the selectmen are doing a lot of work on parking, right? Um, they're waiting to see when the downtown becomes full, uh, when Bunratty opens and all that. Right. That lasts <coughs> ten. Yeah. Almost one wait, till, wait till it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> well, then <laughs> it's okay. subway and Bunratties and everything else under the sun. So I had drove around Haven Street four times of the day looking for a parking spot. What do I have for it's like 10 degrees out. I have my kids with me. I'm like, yeah. oh. I, got, I got to be close to the butcher shop. The kids are going to freak out. Just have one of them keep driving while you go in. Yeah. <laughs> keep looping. Keep looping. You'll be fine. Priorities on the map. Does that work out? Yep. This? So we said we wanted comments back by the second. Yep. So what we're saying with this letter is that we want to seek input. If anybody has anything else that they feel is a priority that they want to bring, they need to tell us by the second so we can have it on the agenda for the ninth. So which this group will kind of collectively say, this is what we're going to focus on. <coughs> because after that, we'll need to start planning workshops or you know whatever other outreach is necessary for, mm -hmm. for these topics. So. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Good. Does that, <coughs> does that cover us for that? I think topic? so. All right. And then I saw, I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't read it yet. But the Tennessee gas Tennessee pipeline gas. is interesting. Yeah, that was, it was addressed to um, the chair of the CPDC. The former chair. The former chair, yep. That would be you. Um, and. Looks like they're starting their um, their NEPA process. Is this the same project that I just saw something, some some Facebook page uh, post about how um, there was a, a report by um, Governor Patrick's administration that he released on the last day slamming the project. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I missed that Facebook post. Oh. One of the le one of these pipeline projects, I guess. Um. Well, this is the gas pipeline, as Tennessee opposed gas. to the MWRA. Those are the two the two pipeline things, which are. There was the, in the newspaper was the MWRA. Oh, oh no, that was a Western Mass. It does. Kinder go. Morgan. It wasn't this oh, one. Oh, okay. This does go across the entire um, state. I just obviously included the locust um, plan that was relevant to to Reading. Is one of the local states prohibiting this from cutting through their state? Yeah, this is the one that goes up into New Hampshire. And New Hampshire said no. In New Hampshire, parts of New Hampshire. Yeah, they yes. Yeah. It's not near our well fields, is it? No. So it passes through um, the only 
it passes through the cedar <coughs> and and just the that northeastern corner of Reading where we abut Leadfield. Um, but they are showing a 25 a, qu a quarter mile radius um, outside of their proposed corridor. Um, yeah, what's what's the next one? This one shows the the part that basically doesn't touch us. No, that does touch. It us. does touch us. Well, yeah, only. In so this one, this actually is outside of Reading. Here's here's our line. Sorry. Yeah. But I mean, here, but okay. It crosses I mean, the pipeline through, doesn't just a titch right through here. It actually goes in Reading. Right. Yeah. So this is land owned by the Reading Open Land Trust. This is conservation owned land, and the piece there's a there's a piece of land here that's um, that is privately owned, but most of this land through here, this is. Um, owned by conservation and this, is, this corner mm -hmm. here is the Reading Open Land Trust. What, what's that road? The West Village Road, that one? This one here? No, 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 the one where the pipeline is. There's, that's, there's that, a, that, a right of way. That I think is... Um, that's, that, a that's a utility. That's utility right away. Okay. So, but really all they're asking here for is to give them, is for us to do their due diligence and get tell us them what, what and tell us, what's, tell us what's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if, there were, if you wanted to include any other but, comments. But, and I guess the one piece here that they, tr they can find out anything that we can give them on open space and all that sort of stuff. The one piece that they really can't no, and that we would need to tell them is um, I forget where it said in here, but any planned um, planned yeah, development. Yeah, I think it missed. I miss, it's yeah, like missing miss a, a page, page on the on the dust packet. Um, but any sensitive environmental receptors within a quarter mile and within a half mile. Of the any planned developments. So that's really the stuff that they would need to know from right, us. Which that they, that's conservation land, running open land. Right. So there isn't really anything. And the other piece is privately owned, and I'm sure it's consumed by wetlands. So, um, this will be also on the Conservation um, Commission's agenda for them to provide any additional comment, um, which we can include back to our letter. My suggestion would be that we do respond so that at least we're on their list of... Yeah. Interested? Yes, we can respond on behalf of the CPDC. <coughs> <laughs> um, but <coughs> I'm not sure there's really anything to say. To say. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll summarize what's there. We can summarize um, the lack of development that we have in yeah. that particular area. But um, and then if there's any concerns from the Conservation Commission, we can keep those separate. If if the CPDC has any objection to doing one comment letter back. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay. So it crosses the corner of the cedar swamp, one of the cedar swamps, whichever one it is. Um, and it's the basically at the, the boundary of Camp Curtis Guild. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, I think it might be owned by Camp Curtis Guild, now that I'm thinking about it. The piece that crosses, so... So um, the basic, we should, you know, basically let them know that we're paying attention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Other than that, we have nothing much to say. Okay. And then the only last thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is on page 66 of your dust packets. Um, one general way is doing some landlord improvements in advance of a tenant fit out which includes the constructions of a couple windows. <coughs> um, wanted to get, if there's any concerns with this, obviously in the past we wanted more windows, so they're providing more windows for this particular tenant. And um, Is this one of those in the, in the corner there? It's right adjacent to, it's going to be the space nearest to Liquor Junction. So... Um, on, on the market um, basket side or on the, or the, the library side, side where the library is you have the library farthest to if you're looking at it farthest to the right then you have liquor junction 
then this space will be moving moving towards Market Basket. Okay. And then there's two other spaces that will be next to this space as you get closer to Market Basket. Mm -hmm. Windows are good. This would be this would be a town, a town planner, planner admin approval, yeah. but um, yeah. and we anticipate that they're probably going to install windows for other spaces. So if there was comments or concerns about this particular design, yeah, it's just, stupid. I mean, it doesn't look like it fits in. It looks like they punched a hole in it. Why can't they tuck it in up against the? Uh, <coughs> make it look like it's integrated somehow. Go from the top of the transom, you know, to the side of the pier. Right, why doesn't it start right at the side of the pier? I'm trying to, I don't know what the structure is, but it could just well, as easily be two feet over. So it, right up to that, where that. Um, well, it's basically. Is. Uh, let's if see. They this is it up against the pier, and they went from the top of the transom, right? At least, you know, at least all of this sort of. This to talk to us it yeah. just looks like they put holes. Somewhere. Yeah. Well, in the comment for I remember for Liquor Junction, and it's true, is that the tiny the windows are 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 tiny, and this is following that same. Well, the, the original building is basically brick warehouse. I mean, industrial yeah. brick. I mean, the, uh, so structurally, I I don't know. No, but they're structuring this. They're the wine bunker is what you're remembering. When the board of selectmen said, "Oh yes, yes, yeah." Where were the wi where the windows? Yeah, like oh yeah, little, little porthole there. <laughs> you can look through it. <laughs> they made it a condition on the liquor license that there be, you know, some sort of window mm -hmm. treatment for liquor junction. For, no, the, for the, wine the wine bunker. The wine yes. bunker, yes. which was in yes. fact a bunker. Yes. <laughs> Well, we should, you know, you're right, encourage them to be more aggressive with the fenestration. <laughs> it should just be more integrated. Well, we can ask them to see if they can revise it. Same cost. Right. You know, they still have to put in these lintels. They're doing structural work here. They're modifying the masonry. Make that hole. They could make the window narrower and a little taller, or leave the same one. I have. Um, can I see your drawing? Sure. So they're doing this because they don't want to absorb the cost of doing it all at once. They're doing so it as each the individual the tenant. Yep. So if they just if they kind of held so that line out here and they tuck this in, close, does that mean what we're going to end up with is yep. you know, once you start to look at it, would, yeah, it doesn't yeah. look like just two yeah. little windows yeah. randomly yeah. placed. It would, it would begin to look like a storefront. <laughs> is yeah. there economies of scale here? I mean, you do more at once, you save some cash. No, but the this thing is, is they just don't know who they're <laughs> yeah, taking they in and how many spaces they're taking. I can understand that. I just think that they they could do better work. Free design advice. <laughs> right there. Uh, so can we provide that? So is the agreement that we provide that feedback, but then do we want Gene to provide administrative approval? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. Fine. Yeah, I mean. Get what you can. Yeah. Well. The windows should be more integrated with the other facade elements. That's. The simplest way to say it. Yeah. If you get a column in the way, then I understand. Although yeah. It's probably going to put a shelf in front of it anyways. So what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> or cash Can we have them provide us a reason why they can't do it that way? Yeah. Sure. So. All right. No minutes. <laughs> Oh, good. I only have seven percent, anyways. Left. <laughs> oh, good. Any other updates? Anything you want to provide, Jean? Um, I ran into uh, the owner of Bunratty Tavern today, and uh, they're getting close. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> it will be one year in February that they had their building permit. And they're way ahead of <laughs> Perfectos. Yeah, way ahead. <laughs> Anywhere from them. Uh, <laughs> Veterans Day, I was in the office and I called Max and he said that, of course, he was moving forward as quickly as possible with putting the uh, framing up. 
So well, it's November 11. Yes. <laughs> say, well, I guess I'll just say that if you can get your framing done before the weather, you'll do that. Otherwise, it'll be in the spring. Oh no, we want to get it done right away. It's okay. <coughs> when was the building permit issue? For Max, um, so Perfectos, yeah, I'll say it was uh, maybe 4th of July. It was a couple weeks after the 4th of July. Okay. I thought it would have been on the 4th of July. Yeah. But it Usually wouldn't. it's 4th of July and Christmas Eve with that project. Yeah, that's a year ago or no? <laughs> uh, this past 4th of July, yeah. Okay, I thought it was no building there anymore. So than that. that's yeah, hey. I know. We're in better shape with you. Yes. Foundation. Yes. They did pour a foundation. Move to adjourn. Second. Close the favor.